Chapter 291. Playing the drums and the jonggu, doing everything, too. Rosalind, Choi Han, and Harold. All three of them were at a loss for words. Kale seemed to agree as he nodded his head. I think it is crazy as well. But what else could he do? This was the best way to really smack the Imperial Prince in the back. Human, human. Why aren't you telling them about the kidnapping you discussed with the Crown Prince? Kale pretended not to hear Rayon. He then calmly started to speak to the three people. Do not worry. I won't get caught. He wasn't like Choi Han. He could deal with that much acting. Young Master Kale, that's not the issue. Excuse me? Kale looked toward Rosalind's frowning face and asked back. If that wasn't it, then what was the issue? It was at that moment. Bang. The door to the room with the teleportation magic circle slammed open. A person with a large body rushed into the room. You, you. He then looked around until he made eye contact with Kale. The large-bodied person, Tunka, started to shout as soon as he saw Kale. Why are you trying to go into the lion's den alone? Hum. Kale became anxious. Why? I'm asking why you need to go into the most dangerous place alone. Do you want to die? I don't want to die. Kale started to wonder why Tunka was suddenly acting like this. However, Tunka started to frown even more after seeing Kale's nonchalant expression. That stupid expression on his face. There was no way that the smart Kale Henatus would not know about it. Tunka believed that Kale knew and was pretending not to know. Going to the Empire's side where the Imperial Prince and the Vice Tower Master are on his own. That was dangerous. Kale Henatus's life could go out like a candle in front of a storm if he showed the smallest of openings. Tunka shouted angrily at Kale who still had the, I don't know anything, expression on his face. I may be an idiot, but you were even more of an idiot. Damn. Kale started to get angry. He tried to say something, but Chief Harrell stepped in. Commander Nim, please calm down. He calmed Tunka down and looked toward Kale. Kale flinched. Harrell seemed to be a bit emotional. Kale started to feel uncomfortable. Commander Nim, I'm sure that you are tired from going to the Empire, so please get some rest. It didn't sound out of the ordinary. Kale relaxed and was about to nod his head. And the spy strategy. We will definitely remember your sacrifice. The soldiers don't know about your sacrifice yet, but you will be etched in history for all of the Whipper Kingdom's citizens to remember forever. Our Whipper Kingdom will definitely defeat the Empire and take the Imperial Prince's neck for you. Hum. Our Whipper Kingdom can smile as we enter that pit of fire that you were willing to enter first. Why would I go into a pit of fire? Why is he so vicious? Kale had a lot to say but could not get himself to say anything. It was because Harrell was a bit faster once again. Then, goodbye. Who? Harrell bowed before dragging Tunka out of the room. Tunka let out a deep sigh and his shoulders were hunched as he grumbled and followed behind. Clack. The door closed. Now only Choi Han, Rosalind, and the invisible Rayon were left with Kale. Why are they playing the drums and the jonggu? Kale's gaze was focused on the door that closed behind Tunka and Harrell as he stood there in shock. Rosalind looked toward Choi Han after seeing Kale's response. Her expression seemed to be asking what they could do about this person. Choi Han slightly shook his head and started to speak. Kale Nim, am I going with you? No, as expected. Choi Han knew that he needed to stay with the Whipper Kingdom as the helmeted swordsman. Then Rayon will be with you, right, Kale Nim? The invisible Rayon answered that question. Of course. I will be with the human. You don't need to worry about that. Choi Han and Rosalind nodded their heads in relief after hearing Rayon's response. Kale would be fine no matter what happened as long as Rayon was with him. Kale did not seem happy to see the faces that were frowning after hearing what he had to say returning to normal after hearing a six-year-old's response. He then nonchalantly added on. Rayon. What is it? You can tell me anything. I need to call the Imperial Prince. The gazes of the people in the room changed. Rayon. Can you make it look like I'm in the Henatus territory when you connect the call? That is as easy as drinking cold soup for the great and mighty Rayon Miru. Amazing. That's right. I am the great and mighty Rayon Miru. Rayon fluttered his wings at Kale's praise while Rosalind and Choi Han could not hide their anxiety. This was especially the case for Rosalind whose eyes were sparkling as she was quickly figuring things out in her head. Imperial Prince Aiden was not an easy person to deal with. 
Young Master Kale, what are you planning on doing? Laying down. Excuse me? Kale brushed his pale looking face. Patients were meant to be laying down. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, I apologize for greeting you like this. Ha. He let out a sigh after every sentence. He was trying to make it look like it was difficult for him to even speak. That sigh sounded very loud in the silent room. Not at all. Are you feeling a bit better? Imperial Prince Aiden's face was on the video communication device screen. He seemed to be concerned. It was not the fabricated expression he usually had on his face. It's serious. Kale seemed to be seriously injured to Aiden. What he could see through the screen was a typical luxurious room with Kale laying on the bed with Choi Han supporting him to sit him up. I ask for your understanding for looking so shabby like this. Kale slowly lowered his head and raised it back as he spoke to the Imperial Prince. I didn't think it would be good for the Rhone Kingdom's citizens, no, the three northern kingdoms to learn about my current situation. I understand your desire to think of your kingdom. Thank you very much. Aiden thoroughly inspected Kale's face. It's very pale. He's seriously ill. He was not faking it. Aiden could be certain about at least that. There's also no magic being used to make his skin look like that of a patient. He's not lying. Aiden's gaze turned toward Choi Han. The youngest swordmaster. This strong individual who suddenly appeared on the western continent was someone they needed to be wary of to the point that he made it on the empire's watch list. His expression is too realistic for it to be an act. Choi Han was not saying anything as he supported Kale to sit up, however, his pupils were shaking as if his mind was chaotic from being worried about Kale. Aiden was good at reading people's emotions as he pretty much had none himself. However, even his adept observation was telling him that Choi Han was worried about Kale Henatus right now. Both of them make it very likely that they are telling the truth. That meant that the chances of Kale Henatus being that, brown robe, were going down. Imperial Prince Aiden had heard everything about the battle at Maple Castle. The people to pay close attention were not the Breck Kingdom, Rosalyn, nor even the Flame Dwarves, it was that, brown robe. An ancient power. A fire ancient power. The person that released the fire that would not go out had suddenly appeared on the western continent. He also did not reveal who he was by wearing the robe. That was why the Empire had placed Kale Henatus on their list of potential suspects. It was because Rosalyn was there and because it was an ancient power. I'm relieved. However, seeing Kale like this made him almost want to stop being suspicious. That was because the Empire's mages had informed him that the brown robe was fine after using the ancient power. However, the Kale Henatus in front of him, as well as the one he saw in Crown Prince Alberu's video, looked as if he was going back and forth between life and death. It wouldn't be weird if he died right now. He was relieved that Kale was not an enemy, but whether he was an enemy or not, if Kale was also in possession of a fire ancient power. We would need to kill him. Kale was currently known to have three ancient powers. The shield, water, and stone spears. It would be bad for the White Star if Kale managed to get another one. Aiden was looking at Kale with an honestly concerned expression. Wouldn't you be overdoing it to participate in the war? I am okay. Like hell you are. Aiden was truly concerned. It'll make things complicated if he dies during the Empire's war. He needed to die later. He recalled what the Tower Master of the Alchemist's Bell Tower had told him. You're saying that this person, this Kale Henatus, has three ancient powers? Ho, tisk tisk. The Tower Master had commented on Kale Henatus's situation with a sad expression. He's going to die soon. Kale Henatus would soon explode and die from the clash of ancient powers. The Rhone Kingdom's growth would completely stall if Kale disappeared. How fun. That was why Aiden was enjoying it. However, he was just hoping that this weak person would not die in the Empire. That would turn the Empire and the Rhone Kingdom's relationship instantly into one of animosity. The Tower Master's voice echoed in his mind again. He'll probably die after using his ancient powers a few more times. This is very sad. The Tower Master was sad about this, but Aiden liked it. That was why he was using a gentle voice to tell Kale how he felt. Thank you for being willing to drag your injured body to help the Empire. I do not wish to ask you for a lot, especially when you are in so much pain. Aiden looked toward the pale Kale. Kale seemed to be having trouble using his power just once. Just once. I hope you can use your strength to help us just once in order to put out the fire. One time. 
The Empire would be happy to put out the fire without using magic nor alchemy. And I would personally be happy to be able to make Kale Henatus die a bit sooner. It was like killing two birds with one stone. It is fine to use my powers for the Empire as much as you want. The Empire and the Roan Kingdom are friends. I also wish to help the Empire out as I have received a Medal of Honor. Aiden had to hold back from laughing at Kale Henatus, this hero of justice. That kind of mindset is useless. If you took a look at it, people were emotional creatures who put their lives on the line for trivial things sometimes. Like this Kale Henatus who was saying that he would heal himself as much as possible and that he would come as quickly as possible. Whether it was for the kingdom, for others, for fame, or even for justice. Aiden found these people who ignored their limits and charged forward to be stupid. His pupils that were brown because he was not currently under the sun focused on Kale Henatus. I will not forget your sacrificial mindset, he would never forget it. But only because Aiden found it amusing to watch people die because of such sacrifices. Then I look forward to seeing you soon. Yes your highness, I will see you in a few days. Kale bowed and the call was soon terminated. The first call with Aiden had been completed. Choi Han was looking at the bowing Kale with concerned eyes. Kale slowly raised his head. His gaze headed toward the video communication device that just had Aiden's face on it. The device was off right now. However, Kale was looking past the video communication device as he started to speak. I believe you saw everything. There was something behind the video communication device that was off. A second video communication device was located there. The person on the other side of that call had watched and heard everything Imperial Prince Aiden and Kale had just said. The man on the other side of the screen brushed back his shoulder-length hair as Kale called out his name. Your Highness, Prince Valentino. The Karo Kingdom's Crown Prince Valentino. He did not hide his vicious gaze. He glared at the off-video communication device in front of him as he slowly started to speak. See you soon, Commander. The Karo Kingdom was responsible for transporting the priests of the Light Affinity Churches to help the Empire. It was known that Valentino would personally lead the priests there for his close friend Aiden. Kale and Valentino would meet with Aiden at the Empire. Yes your highness, I will see you there. Commander, I know you are hurting, so don't overdo it. All right, then. Valentino hung up the call. Kale stood up from his seat. He then headed past Aiden's video communication device, as well as the table with Valentino's video communication device. He could see the flabbergasted Rosalind and the excited Rayon sitting there. There was a third video communication device in front of the two of them. Kale picked that one up. He could see a third person in this video communication device. He was the only one who had watched all of this. Kale called out his name. Klopa Seka. Yes, Kale Nim. The white-haired man on the screen smiled brightly as Kale continued to speak. You heard everything? Yes, Kale Nim. Of course, he had heard everything. The white-haired man nodded his head and Kale gave him an order. Then go pretend to be me. The brown-robed white-haired priest. The person who fit that description almost perfectly smiled and answered back. Any time for you, Kale Nim. As long as it is an order from the one and only Kale Nim on this continent. I will do my best to pretend to be you even though I know that I am not worthy. Ah, something feels iffy. Kale thought it would be fine but felt iffy about Klopa's response and looked at him with concern. However, he could only sigh as the crazy bastard smiled brightly and added on. It looks like the end is near for the Imperial Prince. That was the plan. Chapter 292. Playing the drums and the jonggu, doing everything. 3. Kale needed to use his time wisely in order to deal with this obvious statement. He was standing on top of the tower of one of Maple Castle's castle walls and looking out. Common. No, Priest Nim. Ah, Chief Harrell. Kale pointed to the person next to him as Chief Harrell approached. This is Guardian Knight Sir Klopa. Ah. Harrell let out a gasp. He could see the white-haired man with a concerned look on his face. This was the Guardian Knight of the North who was the symbol of the defeated Indomitable Alliance. It was already well known that he had decided to serve the Rhone Kingdom. However, Chief Harrell still could not help but be anxious around him. A swordmaster. He is also the captain of the Wyvern Knight's Brigade. Although this Guardian Knight may have fallen because of the Roan Kingdom, no, the Henatus territory's miracle-like strength, his strength was real. 
Harold respectfully greeted this strong individual who came to help the Whipper Kingdom. It is an honor to meet you, Guardian Knight Nim. Harold could see Clopas Seca smiling back at him. Clopas' smile had the class and elegance of a knight such that Harold could not help but gasp. Clopa seemed to have even more class than their prisoner, Duke Hooten. He was finally able to understand why the people of the Parun kingdom held their guardian knight in such high regard. That sacred knight slowly started to speak. How could my lowly self say no to the great and mighty Kale Nim's request? Harold flinched. Clopa didn't care as he smiled brightly and continued to speak. In fact, I am extremely happy that I can assist him in creating his legend. Legend? Chief Harold's pupils started to shake. However, Clopa's gaze was as firm as a boulder. For me to have to pretend to be Kale Nim, my heart is beating fast just thinking about how my name will go down as a part of his legend. Harold's endlessly shaking pupils headed toward Kale. However, Kale avoiding his gaze made Harold contemplate things before finally starting to speak again. He truly seemed like a chief who was serving a troublemaker like Tunka. The Whipper Kingdom is just thankful that someone like you, who is a swordmaster and the captain of the Wyvern Knights Brigade, has come to help us. Hey! Harold suddenly heard laughter. Harold's eyes opened wide as he looked back toward Clopa. The Guardian Knight lifted up his hand that was not holding a staff and started to speak. I apologize. I suddenly felt the need to laugh. Clopa barely managed to hold back his laughter that kept coming back and apologized to Harold. Harold was about to get upset but calmed himself down after seeing Clopa looking extremely apologetic and Kale looking at Clopa as if he was stupid. Clopa and Kale made eye contact at that moment. Clopa recalled the conversation he had with Kale through the video communication device yesterday. Clopa, the people of the Western continent still believe that you are a swordmaster and can control the wyverns, isn't that right? I knew it. Just as I suspected, Clopa could not hide his joy. He could not use aura anymore. It was because of these ticking time bombs he had his arms and legs. As for controlling the wyverns, that was a lie that they had spread throughout the continent from the beginning. However, the majority of the people still believed his lies to be the truth. I knew my name would be lifted high if I followed Kale Nim. He really would be able to etch his name into a legend. Aiden, you stupid bastard. The Parun kingdom would go down on the right side of history for choosing to surrender to the legend named Kale. However, as for the Empire and the Imperial Prince, it's the end. Clopa was not excited because of the Imperial Prince's upcoming demise. There was just one reason he was excited. I can live. The fact that he had fake limbs did not matter as long as he and the Parun Kingdom managed to survive. Kale Henetus was someone who knew how to make deals. He was someone who used both the carrot and the stick effectively. Clopa. The Rhone Kingdom will make it so that the Parun Kingdom will be the leader of the Northern Three Kingdoms if you do a good job this time. Just following the legend gave them benefits. Clopa barely managed to stop his laughter and looked toward Kale with a calm expression. I will do my very best, Kale Nim. He returned to his handsome but concerned expression. But the fact that the crazy bastard went from laughing to concern in seconds made him really seem like a lunatic. Kale had a look of disapproval on his face, but just nodded his head. He's someone who would do the job right for the benefits. Clopa was someone who was still oddly rational even though he was crazy. Kale had to now know how to effectively use this crazy bastard. Chief Harrell, I'm sure you're aware of it already, right? Harrell's gaze changed from the chaotic expression he just had while looking at Clopa. Kale continued to speak. Imperial Prince Aiden and the Vice Tower Master will soon arrive here. Harrell gulped after hearing that. Clopa's gaze turned sharp as he looked at Kale. The two of them were both thinking about the same thing. How does Commander Kale know about that top secret information? Most of the Western Continent's power players knew that Imperial Prince Aiden had departed from the Empire for the battlefield. However, nobody could tell the moment they would arrive on the battlefield. That was why Harold had to hold back his shock at Kale's information network. I wouldn't trust it if it was anybody else, but it was coming from Kale Henatus he had to believe it. Clopa also believed Kale. Of course, he had an idea about how Kale might know this. I'm certain the Karo Kingdom's crown prince Valentino gave him that information. Clopa had seen the conversation between Valentino and Kale. Clopa was correct. Kale had heard from Valentino who was supposed to meet with Aiden on the battlefield. 
The Karo Kingdom had been allies with the Mogoru Empire for a long time and Valentino was known to be Aden's eternal close friend. Furthermore, the Karo Kingdom had been willing to come assist the Empire on a moment's notice. Klopa didn't know for sure, however, he started to get the chills. Just how far do Kale Nim's hands reach? He imagined Kale controlling all of the power players on the Western continent. He then heard Kale's voice again. Let's get started. Kale needed to move quickly before going to meet with the Imperial Prince. He looked toward Chief Harrell and started to speak. I need to show him the fires of hell as soon as he gets here. Harrell looked down at the gate. Commander Tunka. He was stationed with the warriors outside the closed gate. Next to him was the helmeted swordsman, Choi Han. We will strike first this time. Kale's voice echoed in Harrell's ears. The majority of the Empire's knights are gone right now. There were some casualties as the Black Towers had fallen during the first battle, however, the soldiers, alchemists, and mages were all pretty much still there. However, Duke Hooten, as well as the Knights' Brigades, were almost all gone. The Imperial Prince is leaving the minimum number of Knights at the capital and coming with the Second Knights' Brigade and all of the other remaining Knights' Brigades. The Knights that Aiden was coming with were not just the Royal Knights. In addition, the Empire's nobles are bringing their family knights' brigades as well. Harold's expression stiffened. He was afraid of the Empire's royal family, but the nobles who had supported the royal family until now were strong as well. The Imperial Prince is planning on finishing off the Whipper Kingdom. He had recruited the nobles for this as well. The Alchemists' Bell Tower's Vice Tower Master and some hand-picked alchemists are coming as well. The Empire was coming at them with full force. However, the Whipper Kingdom did not have any way to increase their numbers. In fact, they were less than before due to the injured soldiers from the last battle. Harold looked toward Kale. Is that why we need to strike before they get here? Kale nodded his head. They needed to do it before the Imperial Prince got here. Let's turn this place into a mess. Harold picked up the trumpet. He heard Kale's voice at that moment. We are aiming for the Empire's remaining knights and the lions. The Whipper Kingdom's strategy was the same as usual. The greatest defense was offense. Boo. The battlefield had been quiet after the first battle. Harold's trumpet broke that silence. It was at that moment. Screech the closed gate to Maple Castle opened. Asterisk 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 Boo Edrich, one of the Lion Tribe's successor candidates. He flinched after hearing the trumpet. Are the Whipper Kingdom bastards blowing the trumpet right now? His gaze went toward the vice captain of the first knight's brigade, the highest ranking knight remaining. Shit. However, the vice captain did not have time to pay any attention to the lion's gaze. He immediately got up. The leaders of the alchemists and the mage brigade got up behind him. His highness is about to arrive soon. Damn it. Why are the whipper bastards doing this now when they have been quiet all this time? The alchemists and mages could not hide their shock. The Whipper Kingdom's forces that had run wild as if they had wanted to rip them all into pieces had not shown any reaction ever since the end of the first battle. Plop. The vice captain of the First Knight's Brigade opened the flap of his tent and headed out. He could see the desolate land with the debris from the destroyed Black Towers. He could also see the damaged and charred ground. The Empire had set up camp right next to that area. There was naturally a temporary wall that the alchemists and mages made for them between them and the Whipper Kingdom. These walls that were made of dirt and not stone gave the Empire's forces a sense of relief from the Whipper Kingdom's attack. Why are they moving now when they didn't even move when we made this wall? The Whipper Kingdom's forces had not done anything, even when they made this dirt wall. So why now? Why did it have to be right before His Highness arrived? The vice captain immediately started to walk up the stairs to the top of the dirt wall. The leaders of the alchemists and mages followed behind him. Ah, so annoying. The lion Edrich looked at their movements with boredom. Gronica, his cousin from his mother's side, approached him at that moment. Why don't you go up and take a look? Edrich didn't feel like it. It was one thing if the imperial prince was here, however, it would be a waste of his energy to take action when it was just these small fries were around. However, Gronica said something to get Edrich to start moving. Did you forget about the flame dwarves? Ha, huh, those bastards. Edrich had not forgotten about how the flame dwarves had mocked him when he was falling from the tower. He started to walk behind the vice captain. I came here because of my father's orders, but. Edrich had come here just to maintain his position as an heir, but he didn't plan to work very hard. However, 
the existence of the flame dwarf tribe was extremely annoying to Edrich. I will kill those bastards. Those useless bastards needed to pay the price for messing with the lion tribe, the most glorious tribe on land. He slowly walked up the dirt wall. Boo he heard the Whipper Kingdom's trumpet as he finally made it up the wall and looked out to the battlefield. Screech the silence on the battlefield was broken as Maple Castle's gate opened. He could see Tunka. The commander was standing in the front as usual. The Empire's vice captain started to shout, Gather the knights, prepare the soldiers. The mage and alchemist leaders started to shout as well. Mage Brigade, time to get ready. Team 1, prepare the fluids. We need to properly use alchemy this time. His Highness and the Vice Tower Master Nim will be here soon. The leaders of the Empire's forces became alert. The Imperial Prince was coming. The Vice Tower Master was coming. They could not show the two of them a terrible sight. However, the soldiers had different views. They said that His Highness would soon be here with the nobles. Can't we just fend them off with the dirt wall for now? The soldiers had not forgotten about the terrible sight of the Empire's unbelievable defeat. Everything had been destroyed and they could only watch as the Empire's knights burned to death. That memory instilled a strong sense of fear toward the Whipper Kingdom's forces. Hurry up and move. However, the soldiers had no choice but to move. They could not disobey their superior's orders. One of the knights approached the vice captain and reported in. Vice Captain Nim. The first knight's brigade is prepared. The knights who had barely managed to survive wished to go back onto the battlefield. The vice captain looked at the battlefield and responded back. We will head out soon. Yes sir. His gaze headed toward Tunka, the warriors, and the helmeted swordsmen. The lion Edrich was looking at them as well, the helmeted swordsmen. This swordsman who was not a swordmaster somehow managed to easily defeat a swordmaster like Duke Hooten. This unknown person was the variable in this battle. The lion Edrich looked past the helmeted swordsman toward the sky above Maple Castle. Dwarf Canel, Is that bastard going to come out as well? I will definitely kill him if he comes out. I will find a way to bring him down from the sky and kill him if he shows up on that white skeleton bird. Kihihihi. Edrich could not hold back his laughter as just thinking about killing Canel was making him excited. It was at that moment. Boo the trumpet blew one more time. Huh. The vice captain rubbed his eyes. Edrich. Gronica called out to her cousin Edrich. However, Edrich could not respond to Gronica's shout as he stared at the battleground underneath the dirt wall. No, he was looking at Maple Castle's gate. Kahahaha. This is the second battle. Tunka was casually walking out with his arms opened wide. The helmeted swordsman pointed his sword at the Empire's forces. However, that was not the issue. There was Tunka, Choi Han, and the warriors. But behind them, there were others coming out through Maple Castle's entrance. The vice captain started to shout. The, B, bear tribe. There were hundreds of bears in their berserk state. They walked through the gate and broke the silence of the battlefield. The lions became nervous. It wasn't just the flame dwarves. Even the bears that went to the gorge of death betrayed arm, no, betrayed the other bears? Edrich. Damn it. Edrich grumbled as he thought about the bear tribe's ruler. At the same time, he looked at the bears coming out of Maple Castle. They betrayed their king. As someone who also aimed to be a king, Edrich started to frown. Boom. 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 There were iron balls at the end of the chains around the bear's arms and legs. Hundreds of these iron balls rolled on the ground behind the bears and caused some vibrations. The ground started to shake. Then they noticed someone else on top of Maple Castle's castle wall. That person is here as well. Edrich observed that, brown robe. One of the mages ran up the stairs to the top of the dirt wall and shouted at that moment. His Highness will arrive soon. The Empire's forces heard Tunka's shout at the same time. We will show you hell for a second time. Hell was another name for war. The second battle started as the countdown for the Imperial Prince's arrival was nearing its end. Chapter 293. Playing the drums and the jonggu, doing everything, for Boom 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 the ground began to rumble again with the sound of the drums. See, crazy bastards. The vice captain unintentionally started to swear. Vice Captain Nim. It's the Whipper Kingdom's soldiers. Damn it. I can't believe the soldiers are coming out too. Are they planning to have an all-out battle right now? 
It looks like only the mages are planning to remain in the castle. All the soldiers are coming out. The voices of the knights, alchemists, and mages all jumbled together. However, everyone's eyes were fixed onto the battlefield. Behind the bears came tens of thousands of armed soldiers with stiff expressions on their faces. It was an incredibly small number compared to the Empire's army, but it was still tens of thousands of soldiers, most importantly. Crazy bastards, they were a group of crazy people. They were the ones that had laughed and ran amok in the pit of hellfire. The soldiers were running forward with nothing but their bodies and their weapons. It's frightening. The vice captain was frightened by the sight. Unlike the other kingdoms, the empire possessed magic and alchemy that were both developed to the highest level of technological prowess. However, those from the empire were afraid of the soldiers that ran towards them with nothing but their bodies. Focus on defense as much as possible while using the dirt wall as our line of defense. Vice Captain Nim. The vice captain looked at the knight that was calling him. His highness will be arriving soon. How can we show him such passive defense like this? Let's fight bravely because the imperial prince will arrive soon. The vice captain looked into the knight's eyes. The knight had seen his colleagues being torn to death by the Whipper Kingdom warriors in the pit of hellfire. There was fear in his eyes. It was an emotion that someone from the empire shouldn't be showing. We had a long period of peace. It had been a long time since the world had last experienced a war. That was why they didn't understand the meaning of war. However, the Whipper Kingdom knows it. The period of peace. Tunka's group was the first to start fighting during that time of peace. We didn't realize that. What good were swords made of gold if you never used them? How could they defeat the warriors that didn't even hold swords made from dirt, but instead plowed through the mud with their bare hands? The Empire's army had no experience going past their limits. No, we're going to hold out. That was why the vice captain chose to defend. However, several dissenting voices immediately started to speak up. We can't do that. They were the leaders of the mages and alchemists. Vice Captain. We must fight in order to maintain the Empire's pride. That's right. We cannot show people that we are being pushed back. It will be bad if our already low fighting spirit decreases even further. We need to boost our morale. These scumbags. Anger rose within the Vice Captain's mind at the sight of the leaders of the mages and alchemists. Basically, you're saying that the knights and the infantry are the ones who will die, right? The mages and alchemists would remain behind the dirt wall's line of defense. However, the knights and the infantry, including the vice captain, had to step outside the line of defense and clash with the Whipper Kingdom's army. Vice Captain Nim. His Highness will arrive soon. We will look incompetent to His Highness and the nobles even if we are splendidly holding down the line. That's right. We have to show them that we're fighting hard in order to reduce the liability of our last defeat. Two of the knights looked earnestly at him. The vice captain closed his eyes after seeing the knights who were wary of the imperial prince's impression. Damn it. Our liabilities aren't the issue here, we might die. How do these knights plan on defeating the Whipper Kingdom's army that are putting their lives on the line when they shake in fear merely at the thought of their liabilities? However, the vice captain was not someone who held the authority to command the entire army as he was only a vice captain. Prepare for battle. The wooden door between the dirt walls slowly opened a few moments later and revealed the Empire's army. There stood the remaining half of the First Knight's Brigade and the Empire's soldiers who had swallowed their fear. The ground was rumbling. The earth rumbled more and more as the enemies approached. Kahahaha! Did you finally come out to fight? Such cowards! Tunka jeered at the Empire's army. The battlefield was already filled with the Whipper Kingdom's forces. The soldiers, bears, and warriors filled the battleground between Maple Castle and the Empire's base while maintaining a wide formation. The vice captain steered his horse forward. Your formation is sloppy. The Whipper Kingdom that didn't have enough troops even if they gathered together was continuously widening their formation. The vice captain immediately recognized what they were trying to do. It seems like you want a melee. He slowly raised his sword and stepped forward. It was possible that he was the only one in the Empire's army who was willing to risk his life like those from the Whipper Kingdom's army. That was why he shouted. Concentrate our forces. Our role is to survive until the Imperial Prince arrives. He chose to survive. Vice Captain Nim. He ignored the knight's protest. It's okay to be passive. Soldiers, hold up your shields rather than your swords. 
They are devils. They're devils. Kahahahaha. Tunka bursted into laughter and applause and stared at the vice captain after hearing that shout. He then stopped in front of the Empire's troops. You have the right mindset. He's the only one of those evil Empire bastards with his head on straight. You're a warrior like us. Tunka raised his head as he shouted that. What do you think? Who do you think will win, Imperial Prince? The vice captain flinched and looked back. Above the dirt wall. A gray-haired man wearing a uniform was looking down at the battlefield. His eyes shone with a golden glow under the sunlight. Imperial Prince Aiden. He made eye contact with the vice captain. The Empire must not yield. The vice captain lowered his head. I'm done for. The vice captain probably looked like a coward in the eyes of the Imperial Prince. Although he looked nice, Imperial Prince Aiden was someone who led administration and politics strictly based on ability. Everyone was afraid to be on his watch list. I'm probably on that list now. The vice captain lost strength in his hand that was gripping his sword. You've been through a lot, vice captain. The Empire's Second Knight's Brigade. They were the knights that the Imperial Prince directly administered. They appeared on the battlefield in golden armor. Tunka started to speak at that moment. It looks that the bastard that will bow his head to us has a lot to say. Tunka did not hide his ridicule for Imperial Prince Aiden. Why, you bastard? All of the Empire's nobles that came with the Imperial Prince frowned at Tunka. However, the Imperial Prince's eyes were cold. He slowly scanned the battlefield. Tunka, the bears, the warriors, the soldiers, and Rosalind. In addition, the helmeted swordsmen. Lastly, there was the man in the brown robe standing on the castle wall. Your Highness. I know, Vice Tower Master. The Vice Tower Master who was standing closest to the Imperial Prince was also looking at the man in the brown robe. She opened her mouth to speak. We have to kill him first. The Imperial Prince looked toward Vice Tower Master Metalona. He also looked at the young man dressed in an alchemist robe standing beside her. Do you agree with her, Hante? I think Vice Tower Master is right, Your Highness. I see. Hante. He was the star pupil of the Tower Master and the future successor of the Alchemist's Bell Tower. He was originally from the slums and was the miracle created by the Alchemist's Bell Tower gathering the children from the slums, making him the main character of a beautiful story. The Imperial Prince kept him at his side this time to make him the new hero for the people of the Empire. The war hero from the slums. It was a good way to bring back the lost positive public sentiment for the Empire, the Imperial Prince, and the Alchemist's Bell Tower. There's also Kale Henetus and one more person. The Imperial Prince looked at the person next to him with a warm but serious expression. Valentino, I'm sorry that you have to see something like this from the beginning. He couldn't use these two to draw in the people's hearts. Of course, Valentino thought differently. He licked his lips and turned his attention towards the Whipper Kingdom's side. No, no I should help a close friend. I'll go to where the priests are. Thank you. I'm grateful that you came to help me for the sake of our friendship. Valentino sincerely laughed at Aiden's reply. How could there be such a bastard? Valentino lamented the time he spent as Aiden's close friend. You'll pay for messing with the Caro Kingdom. Valentino left Aiden's side and headed towards the priests with a stiff expression on his face. Aiden looked at him and started to think. His expression is easy to use, it's useful. Valentino seemed to have a stiff expression as he was worried about the war. Aiden was keeping him by his side because he found Valentino to be useful. Where are you looking at, Imperial Prince Aiden? Aiden looked back at Tunka who was shouting directly at him. He gave Tunka a gentle smile. It was the smile of someone looking at his prey. He opened his mouth and shouted out an order. All knights, aim for the necks of the Whipper Kingdom's army. Rumble the sound of the horse's hooves shook the earth. The knights came pouring out. Over a thousand of the Empire's nobles' knights bearing their own emblems appeared in large numbers starting with the Second Knight's Brigade. You wahahahaha. Tunka laughed at them and raised his club. Let's go. His shout pierced through the sound of the hooves and covered the battlefield. Tunka looked toward the Imperial Prince as he said that. Hum. The Imperial Prince flinched at the look in Tunka's eyes. As someone who was good at discerning the emotions of others, he felt that the look in Tunka's eyes was strange. A sneer? The Imperial Prince opened his mouth and started to speak. Halt. The knights came to a sudden halt. Tunka started to speak as they looked toward the Imperial Prince in shock. 
Clever bastard. Aiden heard a sound at that moment. P.E.P. -e -p -e, it was the sound of a flute. The man in the brown robe was blowing a flute. The tens of thousands of the Whipper Kingdom's soldiers began to move. They raised their hands. They raised both of their hands high into the sky. It was as if they were raising their hands for a cheer. What is that? Huh? What's that marble? Each of the warriors, soldiers, and bears held dark blue marbles in their raised hands. The Empire's knights looked blankly at the Whipper Kingdom's army who were all holding a marble in each hand. Sha Sha the wind blew past them. It was a wind that blew in a different direction from the spring winds that blew from the Empire to the Whipper Kingdom. A huge white skeleton bird appeared in the midst of that wind. Four more followed behind it. Ha, ha ha. Aiden bursted into laughter in amusement. There's a lot. One. Four. And the following dozens that appeared. Dozens of white skeleton birds smaller than the five in front appeared in the sky. The flame dwarves that were piloting them stopped above Maple Castle. Shaw the wind blew down the hood of the man in the brown robe at that moment. Imperial Prince Aiden fixed his eyes on the man. He could see white hair and blue eyes. He could see those eyes that resembled the sky through the man's mask. The white-haired man was wearing a mask that extended from his nose to his forehead. The man with a mysterious air around him raised his hand. The moment his hand went down, Tunka shouted out loud. Run away. What? Run away. The people from the empire were surprised. It started with Tunka. His hands that were up went back down. Shatter. The marble broke and a dark blue liquid came out while Imperial Prince Aiden shouted in response. Turn back. It's the fire from the Gorge of Death. Tunka and the Imperial Princes made eye contact. Tunka spoke as he ran away. Annoying bastard. He recalled the dark blue fire that covered the Gorge of Death simply from the dark blue liquid. The knights that numbered over a thousand opened their mouths and hurriedly conveyed the Imperial Prince's order. Turn back. It is His Highness's order turn back. However, the people behind Tunka lowered their hands as well as soon as Tunka turned around. Shatter. 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 Tens of thousands of dark blue marbles were thrown throughout the battlefield. Kahahaha. Laughter burst out everywhere starting from Tunka. It was laughter full of madness. The Empire's army began to see fire in front of them as the wind blew toward them. It was a dark blue color like the night without a sun. The tens of thousands of marbles that contained the dragon's rage began to emerge one by one. It started small. However, the tens of thousands of individual flames gradually merged and grew in size. The Gorge of Death. Aiden frowned. It looks bigger than the one from the Gorge of Death. The small fire that had started at the size of a person began to grow bigger and taller. It was as if a tranquil beach was getting covered by a storm. The dark blue fire dyed the land in darkness under the sunny sky. Tunka started to run. Kahahahaha, it's hell. This is hell. He heard Rosalind and Harold's shout. Retrieve the soldiers that are falling behind with flight magic. Open all the doors. All soldiers and warriors go inside. The mages, soldiers who remained in the castle, and the chiefs all assisted the soldiers who were fleeing in their predetermined order to escape. Flight magic and haste magic were both used on those that either fell down or were falling behind. They also lowered ropes and ladders from the castle walls for the gates that were narrow in order to let people in quicker. It was done quickly, but calmly. The Whipper Kingdom prepared for this scenario while the Empire's army was busy building the dirt wall. Rosalind and Harold both shouted. The fire is about to flare. The wind is going to blow harder. Tunka stopped walking. He could see the black helmet wearing Choi Han standing next to him. The two raised their heads as they watched the soldiers and warriors get back safely. The white haired man standing above the castle walls picked up the flute again. Aiden could see the white haired man. They were far apart, but he could feel it. The two of them made eye contact. He's the leader. He was the conductor. It was the moment when Aiden smiled. PEP -E -E, the white skeleton birds spread their wings out wide. Whoosh whoosh a strong wind that differed from the one before began to blow. It was a wind that blew against the spring wind that blew from the empire to the Whipper Kingdom. The wind from the dozens of white skeleton birds changed the direction of the fire. The dark blue fire began to flare up. Your Highness. The flames. The flames are growing stronger. The fire is spreading toward the empire. 
This fire is as tall as a mountain. The nobles' voices spilled out everywhere. However, Aiden kept his eyes fixed on the white haired man. Boom! 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 The dark blue flames struck each other and began to create even bigger flames. It was becoming a sea of flame that was large enough to engulf a city. That fire blew towards the Empire's army. The fire mixed with the wind as it exposed its dark mouth and roared toward the Empire while destroying the natural flow of the wind in the process. I can't see it. The dark blue fire tsunami filled Aiden's vision. Maple Castle was no longer visible. Why, your highness, let us move the mages. H. How could there be a fire like this? Let us move the alchemists as well, your highness. The nobles slowly started to move down the dirt wall as they urgently shouted. It was at that moment. Your highness. Aiden, who was standing still, turned his head toward the voice of one of the knights. A man with a pale complexion was walking up to the top of the dirt wall. However, he barely ascended the wall even with the support of his knight. Aiden started to speak. It's been a while, young master Kale Henatus, your highness. Kale Henatus came to see the battlefield with the help of Vice Captain Hillsman. He replied in a voice that sounded full of strong will due to his calm demeanor. Of course I had to come. Don't we have to save everyone? Ah. One of the nobles let out a gasp. They were already aware of Kale Henatus's condition. He was a righteous man who came to save the empire despite his current condition. The Rhone Kingdom's hero has come. The nobles could not hide their admiration. They couldn't help but think that a hero was a hero, even as the dark blue flames that looked like the flames of hell were surging towards them. They couldn't take their eyes off of the hero that drew their attention. Kale heard a voice in his mind at that moment. Human. I feel sorry for Goldie Gramps, he worked extremely hard for nothing. Kale easily ignored Rayan's voice. The Imperial Prince started to speak to Kale. Will you help us? Kale stepped away from Hillsman who was supporting him and barely managed to stand firmly on his own. The commander of the Rhone Kingdom who had saved the Rhone Kingdom while wearing a black uniform was wearing the same uniform today as he slowly nodded toward the Empire's Imperial Prince. The look in his eyes were as firm as rocks, he opened his mouth and started to speak. I will move for the sake of peace. Kale heard the invisible Rayan's voice. You're going to put out the fire and then start a fire, you are strange, human. Kale was going to move for the sake of his peace. Imperial Prince Aiden spoke to Kale with a soft smile on his face. Thank you, young Master Kale, I'll leave it to you. Kale had a thought in his mind at that moment. Let's become the hero of the Empire. Kale drew the righteous but sorrowful smile of a commander. Human, you're good at acting. Sob, our young master Nim. The talkative hillsman is also good at acting. Of course, Kale ignored the voice that interjected in between. Chapter 294. Back, 1, I will give it my best. Commander Kale responded to Imperial Prince Aiden before turning around. The nobles could see the dark blue hellfire that covered Kale's reddish brown eyes. Some of the nobles exchanged glances with one another. Do you think he can do it? especially when his face is so pale? I don't know. He looks even skinnier than when he received the Medal of Honor too. Kale looked paler and skinnier than when he had received the Mogoru Medal of Honor last year. Aiden thought to himself as he observed Kale. Looks like he is reaching his limit. A death from the clashing of ancient powers. Aiden could feel Kale reaching his end. How entertaining. He found it to be entertaining. He doesn't seem like an idiot and seems to know what he is doing. So why does he always try to do the just and good deeds? Aiden approached Kale and asked with a concerned look on his face as he found all this to be entertaining. How much of the water power can you use? I'm sorry for asking for this, but please use as much as you can. He wanted to quickly see how Kale would look as he died. Kale turned away from the dark blue flame and made eye contact with Aiden, not knowing what Aiden was thinking about. To be honest with you, I faced that fire once when I was fighting with the Breck Kingdom. I know. We, believe that it is the work of the Breck Kingdom as well. Kale put on a concerned expression. This fire is even stronger than that fire. Ah. Some of the people around them let out gasps. Cast water spells. Use wind spells as well. Prevent the fire from spreading. The Empire's mages quickly started to move. They stopped the wind as much as possible but the fire could not be stopped with water spells. 
The fire is getting bigger. In fact, the clashing of the Empire's wind with the Whipper Kingdom's wind fueled the flame even more to the point that it looked like a fire tornado. Kale put on a distressed expression on his face as that happened. The people around him knew what that expression meant. He can't put it out completely. What do we do if he can't put it all out? Magic did not work against this fire. The chaos in their minds continued to grow. However, what they didn't see was that Kale's eyes were slowly moving, although he still had that distressed expression on his face. Some of the nobles don't seem to know about it. Magic resistant fire. Some of them did not seem to know that the Empire had that same type of fire. Of course, the alchemist's bell tower was the one to make it, however, the Imperial Prince had already used it against the jungle and during the first battle for Maple Castle. It's the Vice Tower Master. That was why Kale's gaze headed over to Vice Tower Master Metalona. She probably met frequently with the alchemist's bell tower's tower master. Who is that next to her? Kale's gaze headed toward the man next to the Imperial Prince. The man slightly bowed and greeted Kale once their eyes met. Nice to meet you. It is an honor to meet a hero. My name is Hante and I am the Tower Master Nim's disciple. Ah, that person. The miracle alchemist from the slums. Probably one of the few people from the slums who survived. This is great. He found another person to drag into the alchemist's bell tower destruction project. Kale slightly nodded his head. Let us save the greetings for later. Right now. The hero spoke with a stiff expression. We need to put this fire out first. It was at that moment, he suddenly heard Rayan's voice. Something is weird. Human, Hante seems to be dead. Hum. Rayan's comment came in like a hook. How does a dead thing move around? What did you say? Kale's pupils shook for a moment. Human, this is weird. He smells similar to Mary, but there's no life coming from his body. There's no what? I don't know what that is. Oh my goodness. Kale was completely anxious. There's no life? He's dead? Kale turned toward the Imperial Prince. He could naturally see the Vice Tower Master and Hante there as well. Hante was looking toward Kale and smiling. He also seemed to be concerned about the Empire and the fire. How can that face be dead? Is he a zombie? What is going on? Kale observed how Hante's gaze was focused on Hillsman and himself. The Imperial Prince approached him at that moment. Number need to put so much pressure on yourself, your highness. Aiden could see Kale's eyes shaking and his face turning paler, making him realize how much Kale wanted to save the Empire. Is he going to become enemies with Rosalind? There was something else he was suspicious about as well but there was something more important. I trust you. Having the trust of the only Imperial Prince on the Western Continent. The weight of that trust was heavy. The nobles could see Kale's eyes starting to calm down. They were starting to feel pride for their empire after seeing Kale calm down after hearing the Imperial Prince's words. Trust me, my ass. However, contrary to what the nobles were thinking, Kale had calmed down after seeing how faked the Imperial Prince was acting. Who? He let out a deep breath and headed toward the center of the dirt wall. He quietly walked over to the ledge of the dirt wall as the Empire's forces, the nobles, and everyone else around were looking at him. Vice Captain Hillsman followed behind him with a sad expression on his face. He gave off the vibe of a knight who was following behind his liege who had decided to sacrifice himself. Human, you said that you'll control yourself. You promised me. I'll destroy everything if you don't. Ah, I really can't set the mood with him yapping like this. Kale sighed at the mumblings of the six-year-old as he brushed the side of his eyes. He seems to be afraid. The nobles misinterpreted why Kale was acting like that. Commander. Kale turned his head after hearing a familiar voice. The Karo Kingdom's crown prince Valentino. He appeared on the dirt wall again. He had a sad expression on his face. I can't understand how Commander Kale must feel right now. Kale was controlling everything on this battlefield, but was still cutting away at his own life. Valentino felt as if Kale was extremely tall as he felt the weight on Kale's shoulders. However, Valentino could see Kale reaching his hand out toward the large flame with a smile on his face. Swoosh magic and the white skeleton birds. The wind caused by both sides crashed against each other. The dark blue dragon's rage that was extremely hot heated up Kale's body. Pretty much everyone here is my enemy. Hillsman, Rayon, and Valentino. Everybody else other than the three of them were enemies. 
That was why Kale made up his mind. Let's use just enough to cough up a bit of blood. There shouldn't be any danger since Rayon was here. However, the battlefield would become extremely chaotic if he used a lot of his strength and fainted. Kale closed his eyes. Are you looking for me? Yes. I was looking for you. The sky eating water. Her clear voice could be heard. The water started to move while following Kale's will. Shaw the wind was blowing. The imperial prince looked toward Kale. This is my first time seeing him use an ancient power other than the shield. He had heard a lot of things from other people. However, he had never personally seen Kale using this water ancient power. Huh? One of the nobles subconsciously blurted out. He's sparkling. No it is the water. A half-transparent blue water was wrapping around Kale's waist. Oh, young Master Nim. Vice Captain Hillsman was watching that happen with admiration in his eyes. One small person against the large fire. The sparkling water that surrounded that human. It didn't seem like much in comparison to the fire, but it was beautiful. Kale naturally had no idea about this as his eyes were closed. He was currently making a deal. Are you trying to eat up the XXX-like sky? No, Kale thought about what he wanted and tried to make a deal with the sky-eating water. Her clear voice rang inside his mind. Aha! That fire tornado must be hindering your freedom. Should I destroy it and make it XX so that it XXX? Remember these are just the author censoring himself. This crazy water. Kale shared his intentions with the water. Let's just use enough power to barely put out that tornado. All right. I will put out that tornado as you wish. Just enough so that I don't fall over or faint. Kale could feel the water starting to move while following his will. It was different than the dominating water. It was smooth. It was like the slow spring rain or the drizzle that slightly wet your cheeks. This was the first time Kale had this thought as he used an ancient power. It's quiet. He felt the power being as quiet as the lake he found it in. He was worried at first because it was his first time using this power, however, he was relieved now. He heard the Super Rock's voice for the first time in a long time. The predator stealthily and silently approaches before snapping the neck of its prey. Huh? The sky eating water. Don't forget the meaning of its name. Perhaps. It was the moment Kale flinched. One of the Empire's mages shouted as his closed eyes squinted. I feel an extremely large power. That was the beginning. S. Something seems to be flowing underground. It is gathering together. They are all gathering together in one spot and creating an extremely large source of power. Underground. Water was flowing underground. The small streams of water underground were all gathering together in one spot. Only the high-grade mages around the Imperial Prince could feel this flow of water. Their pupils were shaking as they turned toward Kale. A power different than mana. The source of this power was nature. A strong force was gathering underground. And once that large force finally stopped growing in size. Kale opened his eyes. The Empire's forces could see something at the same time. Croc the ground was cracking. They could hear the sound of the ground cracking. They could then see water shooting up from underground. No, a sharp water spear shot out from the ground. They could see the large dark blue fire tornado caused by the clashing of winds. They turned toward that hellfire that was large enough to swallow up a city. Boom the water spear cut through that hellfire. The spear made a blue water cut through the center of that dark blue tornado from the bottom up. Bong. Bong. The flash and noise of the explosion made it so that people could not properly use their ears nor eyes for a moment. The water ate up the dark blue fire. The spear pierced through the center of the tornado and ripped it apart. M. My goodness, all of the Empire's forces were looking at one spot. That hellfire was slowly disappearing. The water spear slowly started to disappear into the sky as well. However, there was one existence that was not disappearing. Their gazes all headed toward one person's back. Commander Kale Henetus, the Rhone Kingdom's hero. They could personally feel the miracle that the Rhone Kingdom's hero had created. They all had goosebumps on their skin. Kale also got goosebumps. What the hell? The fire was completely put out. No, it had disappeared without a trace. He could clearly see Maple Castle in front of him. That was a fire made by an ancient dragon. I was able to get rid of that this easily? I didn't even use that much strength, did I? The sky-eating water took less time than the dominating water to eat up the dragon's rage. 
I can eat up anything and everything, including the sky. He could hear the clear voice of the water again. Kale slowly lowered his head and looked at his hands. His hands were shaking. He had a question as he looked at his hands. He was not the only one. Human, are you not coughing up blood? You're fine even after using that much power. That's exactly how I feel. Ron and Kale had the same question. The super rock chimed in at that moment. Water moves stealthily and quietly before launching a single hit. Kale flinched. It'll be calm until everything rushes in at once. Kale started to frown. His hand was slowly starting to shake faster and faster. Perhaps. Really. The aftershock of the water has always been strong. Be strong. Kale started to shout in anger. Son of a. Cough. It was at that moment. The dark red blood coming out of Kale's mouth caught the attention of everyone as the dark blue flame and the blue water had both disappeared. The hero who had sacrificed himself was slowly falling to the ground. Chapter 295. Back 2. Young Master Nim. Hillsman quickly supported the falling Kale. The vice captain's face was pale. Both of Kale's hands were shaking and there was blood coming out of his mouth and nose. Cough. Ugh. Kale continued to cough up dark red blood and could not control himself. All of the Empire's people could see it. These goddamn useless ancient powers. Damn it. Kale was not in pain. He was also not hungry. His body became stable almost right away thanks to the vitality of the heart, however, he was still bleeding for some reason. He heard the Super Rock's gentle voice at that moment. The water has started using its power in your body. You'll become healthier. Fucking lies. How am I getting healthier when I am coughing up blood? However, Kale had felt it as well. The vitality of the heart was moving more energetically than ever before. He could feel it working hard as if it was happy. Willehe was in less pain than when he had used the fire or the rock. However, dark red blood just kept pouring out of him. It didn't even feel like the amount was decreasing. Boom boom. His heart suddenly started to beat wildly. New blood was spreading throughout his body. However, that was not the issue. Ah! Uh, Kale could not help but frown as he continued to spill out dark red blood in this process of getting healthier. Why, young master Nim? H, how can this be? My goodness, my goodness. You said you were only going to use a little. My heart is ripping into pieces. The Rhone Kingdom's hero cannot look like this. Vice Captain Hillsman continued to support his body as he shouted. Young master Nim. This Hillsman feels like I'm going to die. Sob. T. There's so much blood. Healer. Healer. Where is the healer? Hillsman's eyes were red as if some veins had popped. His veins in his neck were also visible as he shouted with a red face. Hurry up and call the healer to save our young master Nim, to save the Rhone Kingdom's hero. It's dangerous if he faints again. Kale was getting nervous. Did he go crazy? He had told Hillsman to play along but not to overdo it like this. But Hillsman seemed to be writing a drama or something as he exaggerated it quite a bit. Uh, M, human, are you okay? I want to say something too, but I can't because of the talkative vice captain. It was to the point that the six years old young dragon had to hesitate and not say anything. Human, are you okay? However, dragons really were vicious. If you feel like you are going to faint or like your plate is going to break, just let me know. I will destroy everything and take you to the eastern continents to loot all of the baddies' safes. I'm warning you. Ron continued on before letting out a small sigh after seeing the way Kale was looking at Hillsman. I'm relieved. Our human is looking at the talkative Hillsman as if he's crazy. Human, you really must be okay. I'm glad. Soob. Young Master Nim. Our Henichu's territory's most precious and brightest star. Soob. Kale found Hillsman and Ron to be too loud. He wanted to tell them that. You're too. Ugh. Cough. However, he was bleeding too much and could not say anything. Driving me nuts. He was going crazy from being unable to speak. Commander Kale. Kale raised his bloodied face. He could see Valentino approaching him with a priest. The Karo Kingdom's crown prince seemed ready to cry at any moment. Drip. Drip. Dark red drops of blood dripped down Kale's chin and onto his black uniform. Crown Prince Valentino was extremely sad. You really? I think I know what you are trying to say, but it's not like that. Kale had a lot to say to Valentino who couldn't get any words out but had to hold himself back. 
It was because someone else approached them. It was Aiden. Aiden was frowning as he walked over with the alchemist's bell tower's vice tower master and Hante. He knelt on one knee and made eye contact with Kale. Kale's dark red blood dirtied the imperial prince's gold uniform, but Aiden didn't seem to care about that as he reached his hand out. Grab. He grabbed Kale's bloodied hand that was shaking. Are you okay? I'm sorry. I wasn't asking for this much. Aiden seemed to be both thankful and in pain. I think my saying that I trust you must have been a burden on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Imperial Prince's gratitude made the Empire's forces and the nobles finally manage to look around. They could see the clear spring sky and the wind that was once again blowing from the Empire to the Whipper Kingdom. The hell that was approaching them had disappeared and the sun was shining properly once again. We made it. One of the nobles mumbled to himself. He heard the Imperial Prince's voice at that moment. Priest. Save him. We must save Commander Kale. Yes sir. Yes, your highness. One of the priests of the Church of the Sun God who came with Crown Prince Valentino sat down and put his hand on Kale's body to heal him. However, the priest's hand was stopped by someone before it could reach Kale. Um, Knight Nim. The priest looked toward Vice Captain Hillsman in shock. Hillsman looked toward Imperial Prince Aiden with a sad expression as he started to speak. Your Highness, I'm sorry but could you please get a medic without divine powers or healing abilities? The Imperial Prince's eyes clouded over for a moment. He looked toward Hillsman and sounded almost as if he was scolding him. How could you just ask for a medic in such a dire situation? You need to use divine power or healing abilities. That, Hillsman seemed hesitant as he looked toward Kale. Aiden also looked toward Kale who had a faint smile on his face as he shook his head. He was saying that he didn't need divine powers. Aiden could hear Hillsman's voice once again. The young master Nim's body has gotten significantly weak, so it is bad for foreign powers to come in. Your Highness, please get a medic. Kale coughed up more blood and weakly nodded his head. Yes, divine powers or healing abilities are not good. It would be bad if they realized that he was fine. Furthermore, the vitality of the heart had restorative and healing powers. Everything would be ruined if a high-ranking priest showed up and realized that. Ho! Someone gasped. It was Crown Prince Valentino. I didn't know young Master Kale's body had weakened that much. He couldn't hide his disappointment. Aiden had a similar expression. However, Aiden was laughing on the inside. He really is going to die soon. How badly must the ancient powers be clashing within his body for him to not even be able to receive divine power into his body? He was probably not allowing divine powers because he is afraid of the aftershock of adding a new power into his body. Aiden looked at the blood that Kale had coughed up. There was a significant amount of blood. It was quite amazing that he was still alive. However, all living beings will eventually succumb to death. Death does not even spare the heroes. Kale Henitus would die a little bit faster because of this incident. He was quite happy about that fact. The fire was out. He also moved forward the death of a person with three ancient powers. That also puts a halt on the rising Rhone Kingdom. Finally, he could cruelly and mercilessly punish the Whipper Kingdom. The Whipper Kingdom must pay the price for standing up to the Empire, no, to Aiden himself. Commander Kale. He was still holding Kale's hand. He had not let go of his suspicions that Kale and Rosalind were working together until just this moment. However, all of his suspicions minus about 1% were gone now. That was why Aiden put on a sad but smiling expression as he looked toward Kale. We will definitely remember your sacrifice and respond to it with positive results. Kale put on a faint smile that seemed to be saying, Thank you and I am okay. He then started to think. Results my ass. Kale looked toward the Imperial Prince, as well as the Vice Tower Master and Hante behind him, and continued to think. Things are going as planned. Things were fine even though he had completely put out the Dragon's Rage. Kale's group had been moving while expecting the full force of the Empire's alchemists, mages, and knights. They also considered a large number of lions being a part of the Empire's forces. Their plan was to have the Whipper Kingdom defeat the Empire at its full power. P.E.P. -e he could hear the sound of the flute coming from the Whipper Kingdom. Kale let go of Imperial Prince Aiden's hand and started to speak like a general of justice. Your Highness, ah, uh, I trust you. Peace will, ah, uh, peace w, will come. Of course, he also peeked at Crown Prince Valentino who was behind Aiden. 
Valentino bit down on his lips. He repeated Kale's words in his mind. I trust you. Peace will come. This was not talking about the Empire's victory, but the Western continent's peace. Many emotions, including his desire to get revenge on the Empire, filled Valentino's mind. Kale was naturally looking at Valentino. Yes. Do it right. Do it as we planned. Kale was relieved knowing that Valentino looked like he would do things properly. It was at that moment. Yes, Commander Kale. The Empire's strength will soon sweep away the battlefield in the Whipper Kingdom. Igu. You're so wrong. Kale held back a chuckle and looked toward Aiden. He then flinched. He was smiling. Aiden was smiling differently than before. Something felt different. Kale felt his back getting cold. Aiden then started to speak. I will let you know about something. I will show you the Empire's secret weapon. What did he say? A secret weapon. Kale's eyes opened wide. An alchemist ran up to Vice Tower Master Metalona at that moment and whispered in her ear. She blinked before informing Imperial Prince Aiden. Your Highness, the preparations are complete. What preparations? Kale looked toward Aiden. Aiden lowered his head and got close to Kale. He then whispered in Kale's ear. Golems. What? The alchemists managed to restore one of the lost ancient civilization's technologies. Golems. They were made of dirt or gold and resembled humans, although their size depended on the creator's desire. There was a core instead of a heart inside a golem's body, and the controllers used this core to move and control the golems. Kale was starting to get nervous. Golems, it was something that often came up in fantasy novels. That comes out in the birth of a hero as well? There was no information about golems until volume 5. The word itself had never been brought up. Kale felt the tips of his fingers start to shake from this unexpected development. The Imperial Prince gave Vice Tower Master Metalona and the Tower Master's disciple Hante an order. Go ahead and start. The Vice Tower Master shouted out. Activate. Kale soon saw a giant magic circle light up around the Empire's base. Ung the magic circle started to rumble. Tens of mages and alchemists were surrounding that magic circle. Human, something is very odd. Something odd is about to come out. Come out. Something was being summoned to the magic circle. The ground continued to shake. Kale started to get an ominous feeling. And once that rumbling finally stopped, boom. A bright light flashed as large beings were summoned onto the battlefield. M. My goodness, Kale could feel Vice Captain Hillsman's shaking hands. The golems appeared. There were approximately 30 of these black golems that were between 10 to 15 meters in height. Each of them was large enough to take your breath away and were ready to fight. They were scary to look at. Humans would seem like ants if these things were on the battlefield. Kale could hear Crown Prince Valentino's voice, his voice was shaking. Aiden, A, hey, are those really golems? Those golems that disappeared during ancient times? Valentino continued to speak without waiting for Aiden's response. Are you going to sweep away the Whipper Kingdom with those things? Kale took his eyes off of the golems and looked toward the vice tower master and the tower master's disciple. They were calm. Finally, Kale stopped his gaze on the imperial prince. The imperial prince was looking at Kale. Aiden started to speak once the two of them made eye contact. What do you think? Doesn't it feel like the war will end soon and peace will return? Damn it. Son of a bitch. How do we defeat these things? Kale felt his back getting cold. His eyes sparkled at the same time. He put on a gentle smile on his face and responded back. Yes, your highness. It does seem that way. Kale. Whether it was a golem, a flying pig, or whatever else it may be, Kale was someone who was only satisfied by paying his enemies back at an exponential rate. Chapter 296. Back, 3. I'm relieved. I'm glad you and I are on the same page, Commander. Aiden started to smile. I hope you fall down and break your back, you bastard. Kale's mind was boiling. However, he didn't let it show on his face. His gaze then turned toward the golems. Why, young master Nim? I, I've never seen such disgusting things in M, my life. The usually smooth-talking hillsman was stuttering. He could not hide his fear. The golems were not moving. There were just 30 black human-like things that were 10 to 15 meters in height standing there and putting pressure on people. They were scary and disgusting. Vice Captain Hillsman looked toward his allies. 
Crown Prince Valentino could not hide his shock while Kale was not saying anything. Choi Han, Mary, and Miss Rosalind. Hillsman thought about his allies in Maple Castle. Mary could not show herself. Rosalind had to lead the mages. Choi Han could not use his aura. Would they be able to survive fighting against these golems with their restrictions? Hillsman was getting scared. He can't even use his shield. Would the mages be able to stop the golems as they slammed on Maple Castle's walls with their large hands and feet? Even if they could defend against it, they probably wouldn't be able to attack back. If young master Kale Nim's shield was there, then they would at least be able to defend. Vice Captain Hillsman bit down on his lips, it was at that moment. Vice Tower Master. Yes, your highness. Imperial Prince Aiden called Vice Tower Master Metalona who immediately started to speak. Everybody step back. Vice Tower Master Metalona's voice echoed throughout the base. Step back. Make way for the golems. No, run. Run if you don't want to be stomped to death by the golems. Kriya K. The large bodied golems slowly started to walk. Beum just their walking made the ground start to shake. The Empire's forces and the nobles could not hide their astonishment as they quickly moved as far away as possible from the gate of the dirt wall. Commander. Can you get up? That much is doable, your highness. Kale wiped his mouth that had stopped bleeding before standing up. Hillsman quickly supported him. The pressure is even worse watching them walk toward you. Kale pretended to be hurting as he moved away from the center of the dirt wall. His eyes were quickly moving. Most of them don't know about golems. It was possible that only the royal family and the alchemist's bell tower knew about the golems. Bong. Loud noises could be heard as the golems destroyed the gate and the dirt wall around it. They could not fit through the gate. The dirt wall that was close to 10 meters tall allowed Kale to clearly see the side of the golems as they walked by. There are the controllers. There was a seat for the controller on the golem's shoulder. Alchemists were sitting inside half-transparent glass domes. Young Master Nim. They seemed to be the contro. Hillsman who was urgently speaking to Kale in a low voice suddenly stopped talking. He could see the look in Kale's eyes. Contrary to the shocked Crown Prince Valentino, Kale's gaze was the same as usual. Hillsman was able to tell because he had served Kale for a long time. It was a calm and collected look. Kale was more rational and calmer than ever before. He also didn't seem like he had given up. Hillsman started to calm down as well. Kale was observing the golems that were walking by him to the battlefield. He was looking for something. It was something that should exist if it was like any other golem that appeared in fantasy novels. Where is the core? The golem's core. It was the golem's weakness and the easiest way to destroy it. Kale was looking for that. He lifted his head and looked at the sky. Imperial Prince Aiden was observing Kale. He seems to be shocked. The fact that Kale was looking at the empty sky and not at the golems let Aiden feel that Kale was extremely shocked and astonished even though he had a calm expression on his face. Human. However, Kale was looking for something invisible in the sky. The golem's cores. It was the being that would be able to quickly find the hidden cores. Rayon Miru. Human, are you looking for the orb that is the source of the golem's powers by chance? I knew it. Our Rayon Miru is great and mighty. Kale stealthily nodded his head. He made it look like he was admiring the golem's strength. Of course, Kale and Rayon were looking for the golem's weakness. Human, they are all located in different spots. One is in the arm, one is by the heart. They are all different. They used their brains. That was what Kale was thinking. Now they would need to try multiple times per golem in order to find the golem's core. But we have Rayon. We have a damn dragon. Our dragon was better than a ghost at tracing the source of power. Kale's mind started to calculate things as he finally saw a way out. It was at that moment. Human, but something is weird about those orbs. What? Weird? Kale hesitated. What was there that Rayon would call weird? Kale suddenly had a question. What is the golem's core made of? What was making the golems move? Human, it is not mana or magic stones. Yes, I expected that much. Kale thought about something else. Is it dead mana? However, Rayon's answer told Kale he was wrong. It is different than dead mana as well. There's something else in there with it. Something else along with dead mana. Kale started to frown. All living beings eventually die. Dead mana comes out of them upon their death. 
That was just another side of nature. However, that core had something else in addition to that. It's depressing. Rayan's voice filled his mind. Rayon was talking about the thing that was mixed in with the dead mana. I can sense anger, sorrow, and grudge inside of it. They're shouting. I can hear them. There are all sorts of things intermingled inside the orb. Rayan's voice was slowly getting louder. The young dragon was able to feel the things inside the orb better the more he inspected it. Human. This is terrible. This is so sad. The things inside the dead mana. I heard the voices of children. N, no. I hear all sorts of voices inside the small golems. Kale started to frown. Perhaps? He quickly recalled the alchemist's bell tower's past. The alchemist's bell tower had gathered children from the slums 15 years ago to experiment on and kill. They also gathered slaves throughout the western continent to experiment on after that. What was the alchemist's bell tower experimenting on and what were they trying to create? Why did they research dead mana? Kale's eyes started to fill with anger. He looked toward the large human-shaped golem. What if these golems were what they created through those experiments? Kale was almost certain about what they were made of. You scummy bastards. Kale himself was not a good person, but he wasn't a total scumbag like them. Hillsman looked toward Kale after feeling Kale's hand tighten around him. Young Master Nim? Kale's face was calm contrary to his clenched fists. His eyes headed toward the battlefield. Boom boom. The atmosphere around the battlefield quickly changed with the appearance of these large golems. Knights, hold your positions. Mages, support the golem brigade controllers. Excited voices could be heard throughout the Empire's formation. Kale looked toward the Imperial Prince, Vice Towermaster, and Hante. They were heading into the battlefield as well. He made eye contact with Aiden in the process. The Imperial Prince feigned a concerned expression and started to speak. Commander, step back and get some rest. We don't need you to hurt yourself even more. I will do as you wish. Oh how wonderful. Kale pretended to be disappointed as he stepped back. He walked far away from the Imperial Prince to a spot where Aiden couldn't see him. Commander, it was right next to Crown Prince Valentino. Only Valentino's guards were around him as the priests were quickly moving as well. This was the safest spot for Kale. Something happened as soon as he got there. Vice Tower Master Metalona's voice shook the battlefield. Golem Brigade, destroy Maple Castle. Kale quietly said something at the same time. Persist. The hidden video communication device inside Vice Captain Hillsman's chest pocket flashed. His voice was delivered to the other side. Persist. Chief Harrell blinked after hearing those words. The close to 30 golems were charging toward Maple Castle. W. What a monster. Even monsters aren't as disgusting as those things. What are they? G. Giants have appeared. Scared voices could be heard throughout Maple Castle. The Whipper Kingdom's forces have been full of confidence after creating that hell-like fire. That is the strength of the Empire. However, they couldn't help but be suppressed by the Empire's hidden true strength. How could they defeat these extremely large golems? Could hundreds of ants defeat a human? The soldiers' fears were delivered to Harold. Harold's hands were shaking as he held onto the ledge of the tower. It was at that moment. Open the gate, he heard Kale's quiet whisper. Open the gate? Not guard the castle? He wants us to fight against those golems? Harold flinched and turned around. The video communication device that was connected to Kale. There was a total of five people by the device. They were Chief Harold, Commander Tunka, Mage Mercenary Leader Rosalyn, Choi Han, and Klopa. Kale called for one of them. Choi Han. Choi Han's gaze headed toward Chief Harrell. Choi Han started to speak. Kale could hear him through the video communication device as well. Open the gate. Kale started to smile before it quickly disappeared. He lifted his head up. The Empire was excited while the Whipper Kingdom was completely quiet. Kale started to speak again. Klopa, we are changing the order of things. Start with the Firebird. Rosalind's urgent voice could be heard as well. We will persist. Mages, hurry up and put shield magic and offensive magic in your memory banks. We will use all of the magic stones. Chiefs, spread out and observe the golems. Find their weaknesses. You can use the remaining dragon's rage as well. Harold's voice could be heard as well. Choi Han's voice was the last to be heard. Kale Nim, 
Are we just holding on? The corners of Kale's lips went up in the end. Or are we destroying them? This smart bastard. Kale turned his head after hearing a noise. P.E.P. It was the sound of a flute. The white-haired masked man wearing a brown robe was blowing the flute. Screech screech white birds slowly started to rise up into the sky. The white skeleton birds started to fly up as the black golems were approaching the castle. Imperial Prince Aiden was nonchalantly looking at this before he flinched. Perhaps. The largest white skeleton bird. That bird lowered its body toward the tower in Maple Castle. The bird did not fly up. The Imperial Prince could see something else as well. It's not a dwarf. There was indeed a dwarf on the white skeleton bird. However, there was someone else who got on as well. Swordsmen? Swordsmen were climbing on top of the white skeleton birds. Screech. Screech Chief Canel who was on the largest white skeleton bird reached his hand toward the tower. He grabbed someone's hand and helped the man to get on top of the bird. Long time no see. Canel handed the reins over and greeted him. Nice to see you again, Wyvern Knight's Brigade Captain Nim. The North's legendary Wyvern Knight's Brigade. They had looked ready to dominate the air. Those individuals had shown up on the battlefield. It was a combination of the Parun Kingdom's Wyvern Knights Brigade and the Flame Dwarf Tribe's wings. They were working together. Klopa had gathered up all of the Wyvern Knights Brigade members who did not take part in the Henatus territory battle and remained alive. He recalled a conversation he had with Kale. The Parun Kingdom should be the strongest when it comes to fighting in the air. Show them your strength. The white-haired priest started to laugh. I have to put off pretending to be Kale Nim until later, but this is good too. The priest shouted toward the wyvern knights, here are your orders. Klopa, the white-haired priest, recalled his past as a wyvern knight and the guardian knight. It sent electricity throughout his body. He felt as if he was going to go crazy. He felt like he could do anything. How could he not when a legend was behind him? He repeated Kale's order word for word. Fly up. Fly up. And then, aim for the monsters on land. Aim for the monsters on land. Screech screech. The wings of the white skeleton birds opened up. They started to flap their wings and moved to cover the sky while remaining in formation. The Indomitable Alliance's power to dominate the sky was finally revealing itself to the world in its proper form. Boom. Boom. The Golem Brigade stopped walking and lifted their heads up. There were large birds in the sky. In contrast, there were their large golems on the ground. They started to prepare for battle. It was at that moment. Screech. The main gate to Maple Castle opened. Someone who looked like an ant in comparison to the monsters on the battlefield appeared. Only a single human was walking toward these large monsters. It was a swordsman wearing a black helmet and holding an average sword. He appeared on the battlefield alone. Clang! The black helmeted swordsman unsheathed his sword. The order he had just received went through his mind once again. Choi Han. Choi Han pointed his sword toward the golems. He had asked Kale a question. Kale Nim, are we just holding on, or are we destroying them? Kale's response became etched in Choi Han's mind. Destroy them. Choi Han rushed toward the golems. Chapter 297. The Back of the Neck. 1. However, the majority of the people were not looking at Choi Han. The beings on the battlefield were beyond the limits of human imagination to focus on a regular human. Why are the swordsmen? No. Are they knights? The people of the empire could see the people wearing white armor on top of the white skeleton birds. There were tens of these white skeleton birds. Although they were smaller than the original five, they were all at least three meters in length. It was obvious what they were aiming for. They were most likely aiming for the golems. The vice tower master motioned to the tower master's disciple Hante with her eyes and Hante immediately gave the order to the alchemists and the mages. Everybody. Attack those birds, no, attack the controllers. The Empire's mages immediately started their casting. They were trying to attack the white skeleton birds and their controllers. One of the nobles looked toward Imperial Prince Aiden and blurted out at that moment. Your Highness, that person has white hair. Is it possible that the Parun Kingdom is getting involved? The largest white skeleton bird at the center of the formation. The brown-robed man with white hair and blue eyes was holding the reins of this bird. It naturally made them think about the Parun Kingdom's Guardian Knight Sekka household who were famous for their white hair as well as the Wyvern Knight's Brigade. 
it is suspicious that the white-haired man is wearing a mask and that the controllers are all wearing armor with no insignia. Anybody would think that they look suspicious. The noble raised his voice after seeing Imperial Prince Aiden not saying anything. Furthermore, the bear tribe and the dwarves who were part of the Indomitable Alliance are all with the Whipper Kingdom. Is, is it possible? The noble started to frown. He suddenly thought about a terrible possibility. Is it possible that the Indomitable Alliance and Breck Kingdom are planning something? Did they decide to side with the Whipper Kingdom? The faces of everybody around the noble started to become gloomy. They were worried that the war may grow to reach the continental level if things went awry. It was at that moment. I'm not so sure about that. Imperial Prince Aiden responded as he turned around. He looked toward Kale and Valentino who were standing at the end of the dirt wall away from the soldiers. He was especially focused on Kale. Is that white-haired man really someone from the Parun Kingdom? Is it really someone from the Seca household? He had no way to tell. However, although the nobles didn't know about it, the Imperial Prince and the Empire's leaders all knew an important piece of information. Klopa Seca is a fake wyvern knight. Arm made people believe that. In addition, Aiden believed that Klopa had chosen to side with the Rhone Kingdom after his defeat at the Henatus territory. The Breck Kingdom and the Parun Kingdom. The two of them could be planning something. However, the Rhone Kingdom could be leading the two of them as well. That made more sense when you considered the strength of the respective kingdoms. Which was the truth? He had no evidence to back either theory. Imperial Prince Aiden and Kale made eye contact. If that is the case, why did the Rhone Kingdom send their hero to the Empire knowing his life may be in danger? The Rhone Kingdom's crown prince cherished the Rhone Kingdom's hero. And that Rhone Kingdom's hero did not care for his own life to help the Empire. Aiden's mind was a complicated mess, it was at that moment. P.E. a chilling sound of a flute cut through the air. The Imperial Prince looked up to the sky after seeing Kale look up with genuine shock. Hum. The Imperial Prince could see a brown robe falling to the ground. The white-haired man had taken off his brown robe, his appearance was clearly visible now. Imperial Prince Aiden's eyes opened wide. A priest? It was a spotless white priest robe. Kale became anxious the moment he saw the robe. That bastard, Klopa Seca had happily thrown away the brown robe. Kale had not told Klopa that it was fine to take the robe off or given him the permission to show that he was a priest. That was the reason for it. You intelligent crazy son of a bitch. Kale had to work hard to prevent the corners of his lips from moving up after suppressing his shock. He could hear Rosalind's voice quietly coming through the video communication device in Hillsman's pocket at that moment. Activating voice changing and amplification magic. Ah, they're all so smart. Everybody else was focused on the white priest robe and the white armors. Kale was full of admiration for Rosalind's decision making abilities. The reason for that soon filled the battlefield. Look to the sky. Klopa's voice was changed to an eerie voice. It was the type of voice that gave you the chills and made it hard to forget. Kale could see Klopa Seca raising his hands up, he had let go of the reins. The others soon followed. The white armored knights raised their hands up as well. They then pointed to the highest spot in the sky. They were pointing at the sun their empty hands were pointed toward the sun similar to how the believers of the Church of the Sun God pointed to their God. Klopa shouted out at the same time. We will head toward the light. That was a famous phrase left behind in the Church of the Sun God. Necromancer. It was what the Church of the Sun God had shouted as they cleared the world of the necromancers and the darkness. This bastard. Kale truly liked what the crazy Klopa was doing right now. Of course, none of this was planned in advance. However, the golems weren't in their plans either. If they throw us a curve ball, we'll throw one right back. The people who cause chaos on the battlefield are likely to be the ones to win. Kale, Klopa and Rosalind all knew this to be the case. Their experiences as commanders had allowed them to experience it in the past. Klopa was sitting on the bird above everyone else as he looked down. They're all so small. He had felt something similar when he had led the Wyvern Knight's brigade as the fake Wyvern Knight. Humans looked so small when you looked down from up here. They looked so useless. That is why I thought I would become a legend. Klopa felt as if he would start to laugh. He had repeated what the Church of the Sun God had said toward the necromancer as he was worried that he would start to laugh like a maniac. We will obliterate the darkness in the name of our Lord. Yes, obliterate them. 
All of them. Of course, Klopa did not believe in a god. He did not believe in religion. However, there was just one thing he believed in. Klopa then looked down once again. He could see the red hair. His sword master's eyesight allowed him to clearly see Kale's face. He could see Kale's relaxed expression. Klopa was so excited that he said something that the Church of the Sun God had not said. We will become legends. I can see the legend. I can follow behind him. I can survive. That was the only thing he believed in. P.E. The sound of the flute filled the air again and the knights clenched onto their swords while the dwarves grabbed onto the reins. The wyvern knights who managed to live but never had the chance to fight shouted out loud after getting the chance to fight in the air again. We will become legends, the guardian knight Klopa Seca. The loyal knights who followed his orders started to move. The church of the sun god? Did they really say the sun god? The ones that fought against the necromancers in the past? Chaos was present on the faces of the empire's forces. Some of the nobles as well as the majority of the soldiers could not hide their anxiousness. No matter how much the trust in the church had fallen because of the past few incidents, it was still their religion. People who looked like a priest and holy knights of their religion were pointing their swords toward the empire's forces. Imperial Prince Aiden started to speak. Metalona. The vice tower master shouted out. Attack. Tens of magic spells shot out into the air toward the white skeleton birds. Bong. Bang. Bang. The spells started to explode in the air. Ah. Some of the white skeleton birds shook from being hit, making the dwarves and knights almost stumble. However, none of them were hit properly. Commander Rosalind. Vice Tower Master Metalona looked toward the Whipper Kingdom's castle wall where Rosalind should be located. However, Rosalind was calmly giving orders to the Whipper Kingdom's mages. Kale could hear her voice through the video communication device. We will focus on defending against the Empire's spells. Use our spells to explode theirs in advance before it can touch the white skeleton birds. Bong. Bang. Bong. The sky was covered in explosions from the two sides' attacks. The entire sky was filled with explosions. They then led to dark gray smoke filling the air. Attack. Keep attacking. Vice Tower Master Metalona continued to shout. The white skeleton bird controllers will not be able to see because of the smoke from all of the explosions and it might even be more difficult to control the white skeleton birds because of the aftershock of the explosions. Spells that seemed to number in the hundreds more than the Whipper Kingdom covered the sky. Nothing was visible in the gray sky because of that. Shouldn't we be oh. Okay now? It was the moment the soldiers and nobles blurted out what they were thinking. Vice Tower Master Metalona was dutifully observing the sky. She heard the Imperial Prince's voice at that moment. Not yet. These bastards, Shaw Vice Tower Master Metalona could hear the wind. She could see the white birds cutting through the gray smoke as if they were arrows. These bastards are strong. It was the moment they heard Imperial Prince Aiden's oddly heated voice. Boom. Tens of the white birds that cut through the magic explosions crashed into the black golems. Bong. Bong. The white bird's beak and wings aimed for the golem while the golem's large hands aimed for the white birds. They crashed into each other over and over. Neither side worried about being destroyed. A battle of giants. One of the nobles commented in fear. The ground continued to shake and their ears were numb from the loud noises. There was no room for humans to get involved. However, the people controlling these large objects were fiercer than ever. This was especially the case for Klopa whose voice was back to normal who continued to crash toward the golem's controllers without caring about how his white hair was fluttering in the wind. K, Kiki, Kahahahaha, he could not stop laughing. However, his eyes were cold. You're so strong. You've got such a strong body. The golem's bodies were strong. They were so strong that they could laugh at the sturdiness of the white skeleton birds that were fortified by a necromancer. However, Klopa shouted without any hesitation. Crash into them. Knights, take out your swords. Destroy the cockpits. They had no reason to fear. Bong. Bong. The battle of giants continued to intensify. No, it was just the white skeleton birds that were flying around as if they were crazy. The golems were trying to swat these white skeleton birds away. Their goal was destroying Maple Castle and not these white skeleton birds. So annoying. Contrary to what he was saying, Imperial Prince Aiden was smiling. He then reached his hand out toward Hante. 
Hante quickly took out a gray orb and handed it to the Imperial Prince. Aiden started to speak. His voice was delivered to the cockpits of the Golem Brigade. The Golem Brigade will ignore those birds. Those birds were probably trying to delay the golems than to destroy them. Why? It would be hard to find the golem's core even if they managed to destroy the cockpits. How could they find the hidden golem's cores in this chaotic time? Furthermore, the golem's body was extremely sturdy that it would be hard to destroy pieces to get to the core. The Imperial Prince gave the order. The golem brigade will quickly move forward. Your number one priority is taking down Maple Castle's walls. Screech. The golem's movements started to change. The large golems started to ignore the attacks of the white skeleton birds. Boom. 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 The smallest golem was 10 meters tall while the rest of them were taller than that. They started to run toward Maple Castle without any hesitation. It was at that moment. The Imperial Prince started to speak again. He was speaking into the gray orb. What is going on? 15 meters. The largest and darkest golem at the center that was leading all of the other golems suddenly stopped. Kale quietly mumbled so that only those right next to him would manage to hear him. Help Choi Han. The young dragon responded back. I understand, human. I'll come back after destroying it. Kale looked toward the largest and darkest golem. He could see a tiny person climbing up that golem's body. It was Choi Han. The swordsman wearing a black helmet effortlessly climbed up the golem's body. This was a fight between giants. However, a single human suddenly became involved. Choi Han heard the voice of a reliable partner in his ear. Choi Han. Our human said to help you. Choi Han started to smile. He lifted his head up. He could see the large golem's body. He could feel how sturdy and strong this black body was as he climbed up. However, his reliable partner, the young dragon told him what to do. The back of the neck. Aim for the back of the neck. Ung Choi Han could see the golem's hand moving to catch him. It was so big and scary that he could hear it cutting through the air. Choi Han, the source of its power is there. However, Choi Han did not stop. Our human said to destroy that, he had no reason to stop. He only had reasons not to stop. Chapter 298, The Back of the Neck, 2. Your Highness, it is that man. The mage who led the magic brigade in the first battle shouted while looking toward Imperial Prince Aiden. The tip of his finger was pointing to the largest golem. That man is the one who wounded Duke Hooten, the swordsman with the black helmet. The man who brought down the sword of the empire without using aura. Aiden's gaze shifted over to the golem that the mage was pointing at and saw a person running up the golem. It was a presence so small that it seemed insignificant. Is he a sword master, or a swordsman with special abilities? Aiden was curious. However, it was not a particularly important issue. I'll find out if I catch and torture him. It was a simple issue. He opened his mouth and spoke to the gray orb. Number one, capture the helmeted swordsman. Number one. The golem that Choi Han climbed on was the first golem that the alchemist's bell tower recreated. The golems were named by size. Number 17. 18, and 19 will assist. The rest will advance toward Maple Castle. Boom the golems began to move again according to their orders. Golem number one was the first and largest golem created since their extinction during ancient times. The alchemist sitting in the cockpit of the giant golem began to steer. This fly like nuisance. Tisk. The alchemist frowned and couldn't contain his irritation because he had missed his chance to act. Ung a huge fist flew towards the fly that was stuck to its body. The fist opened. A large palm struck down towards the human that was coming up its thigh. Boom. The golem smacked its body like a human would when trying to catch a mosquito. Choi Han couldn't help but scoff. It's like I'm a mosquito or a fly. He looked at the palm that hung above him and kicked the ground. Tap. His body shot up between the golem's fingers in a flash. Right after that instant. Boom. The loud sound of an impact was heard. The sound wasn't merely at the level of a palm smacking the body. Choi Han. Behind you. I know, Rayon. Choi Han twisted his body. Another golem's hand surged through the air towards him. Choi Han could see the cockpit of the slightly smaller golem. The alchemist within that cockpit sneered at Choi Han as if he had already caught him. Stepping into this fight is way out of your league. 
Golem No 17's palm flew towards Choi Han. Choi Han, there's one on the right, the left side too. Huge black golems blocked all sides of Choi Han's path. Darkness enveloped him as if it were night. All he could see when he lifted his head was the black face of a golem. One of the alchemists in the cockpit shouted, We got him, we'll avenge Duke Hooten. Why were humans afraid of dragons, monsters, and wyvern knights? The alchemist thought the answer was simple. It's because humans are infinitely small existences in comparison to them. That was why the alchemists that steered the golems tried to trample the insignificantly small human. At that moment, you don't seem to know. Grin. Choi Han let out an uncontrollable laughter. It was hilarious to see those who struck out only believing in their large size. They're all humans in the end. It was humans that manipulated these things in the end. Why were dragons and wyverns terrifying? Just because they were big? No it was because they were living creatures, like humans, who could emit such overwhelming pressure or murderous intent. An empty object is an empty object in the end of the day. Choi Han twisted his body, from the right first. Boom. The golem's fist struck the empty ground. The ground shook from impact. Tap. Choi Han stepped on the golem's shoulder and sprung up into the air. Now behind you. Choi Han's body spun once in the air. Tap. His feet lightly stepped on the back of the golem's hand that came from behind him. This bastard. The alchemist saw it. The alchemist saw a person kick off the back of the golem's hand and surge into the air like a butterfly, no, like a bird. He looked free. The alchemist had a gut feeling. No longer could he, no. The alchemist controlled the golem's other arm. Its huge hand quickly headed towards the air where Choi Han was floating. He avoided it. However, Choi Han avoided the fast and strong hand. He avoided it extremely easily. Looks like there was a reason why the sword of the empire fell. Sweat formed on the pilot's forehead. Meanwhile, he could clearly see the being that stepped on the hands and feet that attacked him to soar higher upwards. The alchemist in golem number 17 gulped at that moment. Our eyes met. The black being stepped on the golem's shoulder where the cockpit was and continued moving up. He had a black helmet, a plain iron sword, and wore a light black attire. There was only a small red glow in the midst of all the black. No, there were red eyes. Our eyes, our eyes met. He definitely saw red eyes between the slits of the helmet that covered the man's face. The alchemist felt a terrifying chill down his back at that moment, and his hands and feet went numb. He felt fear for that one man. However, that man just passed by the alchemist. The alchemist in golem number 17 realized something and shouted. Number one. We have to protect number one. Choi Han was already treading on number one's shoulders when the alchemist's voice reached the gray orb in Imperial Prince Aiden's hand. He then passed number one's cockpit. Choi Han saw the bewildered alchemist beyond the half-transparent glass. Golem number one's body twisted around at that same moment. Then its hands went towards Choi Han who was on its shoulders. Number one's pilot realized something as he saw Choi Han keeping his balance and avoiding the golem's hand. He knows. This bastard knows. The helmeted swordsman headed towards the back of the neck. Your Highness. That man knows where the core is. No. The core was reduced to a very small size and deliberately hidden on the back of the golem's neck instead of in the heart, stomach, or head. The alchemist knew, statistically speaking, that the helmeted swordsman couldn't possibly pinpoint the core's location in one go since even the back of the golem's neck was several times larger than the size of a human being. Besides, he doesn't even have aura. How does he plan to destroy the golem's body and core when it's difficult to even cut the golem's body with aura? Aura can't destroy the core anyways. Something at the level of aura couldn't destroy the core. Only something that held the same attribute as the core or something that was several grades higher in strength could destroy the orb containing the core. However, the alchemist had a strange, no, terrifying conviction. He knows where he is going. He's certain about the location of the core. His unhesitating strides and movement said it all. It was a big problem if that was the case, he shouted without even knowing. Don't touch the core. It's dangerous to even touch it. The vice tower master could even kill me. The shout resounded like a scream, but it didn't even reach the helmeted swordsman. The golem's body was shaking. Choi Han's body headed towards one place. Choi Han. 
It's in the lower central area on the back of the golem's neck. You just have to go a little farther. He could hear Rayan's voice. Choi Han firmly grasped the handle of his sword. Rayan spoke in a curious voice at that moment. Choi Han, are you hurt? Why are your hands shaking? Your body seems tense. Choi Han's fingertips were trembling as Rayon pointed out. He put strength into his trembling hands. Strange. Badump ba dump. Choi Han's heart was beating wildly. Why was his heart acting odd like this? He felt the aura in his body start to fluctuate at the same time. Then he headed towards one direction. Choi Han's eyes looked to one place. The lower central area on the back of Golem number one's neck. The place Rayon said that the orb containing the source of the golem's power was located. That was where Choi Han's undivided attention and senses were focused. Thud. Thud. His heart beat harder. Choi Han drew his sword. His sword and his hand desired the source of the golem's power. He realized it instinctively. I can get stronger. The thing inside contains the last piece that I need to make my perfect darkness. I don't have to stand up against despair if I absorb this. Choi Han thrust his sword into the back of the golem's neck without hesitation when he realized that. Stab. Black aura spewed out from the embedded sword. The imperfect darkness that others couldn't see penetrated into the golem's body. Thud. 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 Choi Han's heart was pounding. Golem number one's body shook even more violently. No. Don't touch the core. Number one's pilot's face contorted as if he was about to cry. In the end, the golem began to fall backwards. It was a last-ditch effort to get rid of Choi Han. Golem number 17, 18, and 19 attacked from above. However, Choi Han did not see them. He thrust his sword deeper and deeper. Then he heard it. Tang. It was the sound of glass. Choi Han immediately concentrated his aura to the tip of his sword and stabbed forward as if he were possessed by something. The black aura, the imperfect darkness, broke the orb. Crack. It was at that moment. He broke it. Number one's alchemist's eyes widened as he watched the control panel turn black. His lips trembled. There would have been a warning alert if it was a higher grade conflicting power. However, it must have been something with the same attribute as the core since the alert didn't occur. A. A human has the despair attribute? And deep despair at that? The alchemist's face turned white with fear. I'm dead. The core was broken. I, I'm so dead. It occurred when the alchemist jumped out of the cockpit. Key a chilling sound filled the battlefield. Then everyone saw it. The saw the black smoke that was rising from the back of the golem's neck. Key 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 a terrible cry rose together with the smoke. Choi Han couldn't move as if he was frozen. Black energy flowed through his sword using his imperfect darkness as a medium. Pain. Anger. Despair. The despair of those who have been deprived of their lives. Choi Han. Choi Han could feel the despair of others. No, he was bombarded by the despair of hundreds of people. Choi Han. His eyes stopped at where his sword was embedded. Something began to flow up through the sword. Drip. Drip. A liquid spilled out from the orb within Golem number one which had stopped moving. Black liquid. It was dead mana. However, it was different from the dead mana that he had encountered so far. He could feel despair within it. Darkness, extremely deep darkness, flowed out. It was a mass of despair. Choi Han. Drip. Drip. The liquid that flowed out a drop or two at a time dyed Choi Han's ordinary iron sword black. That thing is similar to dead mana. I should avoid it but. Choi Han was aware that he had to move but couldn't move at all. His body wouldn't move as if it was frozen. He realized it instinctively. How to obtain perfect darkness. An easy way out when I don't want to personally suffer despair. It was to become a monster that fed on the despair of others. Choi Han's heart and the aura within his body kept urging him to become a monster. Know this, this, it was as Choi Han's face turned white. Choi Han. You stupid bastard. Gasp. Choi Han gasped as he felt an invisible round body pushing him away from the sword. He also felt someone's hand grab him by his collar. Rayon. It was Rayon who pushed him away from his sword. Klopa. Klopa was the one who grabbed him by the collar. Choi Han was separated from his sword and flew up with Klopa holding his collar. 
He felt the cool yet oddly warm and soft touch of reptilian skin on his cheek. It was Rayan's front paw. I. I must have gone crazy for a second. I think I went crazy for a second. It happened right as Choi Han was about to say that. Ki 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 the terrible cry grew louder and louder. The black smoke could be seen spreading farther as well. Black smoke covered the sky like a sky during a fire. The Empire's soldiers and the Whipper Kingdom's soldiers that were not on the battlefield probably saw one giant puff of smoke. However, that wasn't the case. They were extremely dark droplets of liquid that would not be visible to people outside the battlefield. The total amount of liquid was small enough to be contained within a person's two hands. Choi Han started to speak. W, we have to get rid of that liquid. They had to get rid of that black liquid that was more terrible than dead mana. That thing should not exist in the world. Rayon, we have to inform Kale Nim. They had to let him know that there was something more terrible than the golems. He needed to know that the Empire and Arm were truly crazy. And that hell will really begin when that thing comes out into the world. Choi Han's eyes turned to the Empire side instead of the Whipper Kingdom's side. He was looking for the person with red hair standing among countless other people on the dirt wall. The red hair was hard to find. However, numerous amounts of the Empire's troops could be seen moving around. The Golem. The Golem was destroyed. Who is that person? He was the one who defeated Duke Hutton. The Empire's side fell into chaos. All they could see was Golem number one that stopped moving abruptly in a lot of black smoke. Key there was also the chilling sound. Won't all the golems be destroyed at this rate? The strangely contorted expression on the Imperial Prince's face could be seen the moment the fear-filled nobles looked towards him. And there was a certain red-haired person watching the Imperial Prince. Young Master Nim. This, this. Although Vice Captain Hillsman wanted to cheer at the sight of the golem being destroyed, he patiently suppressed such emotion and spoke to Kale while carefully looking at the Imperial Prince. Young Master Nim? He was taken aback. Kale was clutching the area over his heart. Young Master Nim, are you feeling ill again? Do you feel like you're going to throw up blood? Vice Captain Hillsman's voice could be heard. Human, what is it again? Choi Han and I found these terribly sad things. Rayan's urgent voice was heard in his mind. Human, you have to hurry. This is a big problem. I, I think it'll be hard for even me to handle. Do you think Gramps can do it? Young Master Nim, is your heart hurting? However, Kale couldn't properly hear them. There was a lot going on in his mind. Kii Kii. A terrible cry and black smoke. It was the moment he could only see and hear those things coming from the stopped golem. Thud. 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 His heart began to beat madly. The inside of his body rocked violently. What's going on? It was then that the always quiet voice rang in his mind. It was the vitality of the heart. It's the same as that time. That time. Kale breathed in deeply at the beating of his heart and questioned what was going on. This time the indestructible shield, the gluttonous priestess's voice was heard. We had to fight thousands of golems back then. Golems are existences made of dead mana and suffering souls. The core's liquid is a terrible and horrible thing. Next the sound of the wind, the thief, chimed in. Golems. If you want to run away together from that then use my power. If you want to protect your people and your home, then use the power of the earth. Use the wind to run away together or use the earth to protect everyone. And lastly, another voice stepped in at that moment. It was the sky eating water, and if you want to destroy them? Our names aren't just for show, Kale thought over her words. If he wanted to destroy, then, the sky eating water whispered while he was thinking. What would we need to eliminate both the dead mana and the black despair within the golems? There was only one answer. Kale said the answer out loud. Fire. The fire of destruction, the super rock's voice could be heard. Do you know why that cheapskate ended up setting fire to the northern area of the western continent? Of course, it started for a different reason as well as to help the sky eating water, and um, there was also the fact that this nutjob went crazy, but. The time when the northern area of western continent was set on fire. It wasn't an easy ordeal no matter how crazy you were. However, the fire of destruction was only able to save it by going mad. He was able to save the western continent. This cheapskate was the one who eliminated the greatest amount of black despair and golems in the western continent. 
That was why he was a hero at least to all of us. Fire and light. The one who surrounded himself with the fiery thunderbolt and used fire and light to fight against despair. The true power of the complete fire is to destroy or purify everything. Destruction or purification. Nature's element of fire was somewhere that contradictory existences coexisted. Kale heard the voice of the fiery thunderbolt that had been quiet until now. Its voice was serious for the first time. Golems and black despair are existences containing the despair of those who have been deprived of their lives. Their deaths weren't natural but the result of black magic. Black magic? Not alchemy. The voice that lost its lightness was infinitely low. The fire of destruction spoke its will and beliefs for the first time. We need to get rid of that damn thing. No one's lives should be taken away like that. People need to protect their lives. Kale could feel the five ancient powers roaring together for the first time. They all shouted at the same time, Get rid of that. Kale relaxed his grip on his chest. Young Master Nim, are you alright? Human, are you okay? Rayon and Hillsman saw the expression on Kale's face. One side of Kale's mouth crookedly crept up. To think that these damn ancient powers and I have the same thought. He liked it very, very much. Yeah, we have to get rid of that. It's not in my character to let that go. One of the powers that Kale had gathered started to lift its restrictions after seeing that his new owners will match his former owner, the hero's will. Those powers were originally ones that didn't need a plate. The flame of the one called the greatest ancient warrior began to rise again within Kale's body. Chapter 299. The back of the neck. 3. Boom boom. The inside of Kale's body was pounding. Kale could hear a loud cry coming from inside his body. Something was happening to the fiery thunderbolt tattoo over his heart. That thunderbolt was slowly being absorbed into his body. That was the only tattoo that disappeared from his body. Black magic, the birth of a hero, only had one sentence about black magic. Less than necromancers and black mages. Greater than it was a story about when the necromancers met their end at the hands of the Church of the Sun God. Less than although both necromancers and black mages use dead mana, one moves within the boundaries of nature while the other rebels against nature. Greater than. Less than black magic that is said to have disappeared after ancient times is something that goes against rationality. Greater than. Kale looked toward the creatures that was created while going against rationality. Golem. The chaotic voices of the Mogoru Empire's forces reached his ears. Just who is that man? Does that mean he can destroy the other golems as well since he managed to destroy the largest one? The soldiers were crouching in fear while the nobles and leaders were shouting. Screech screech the black smoke and the eerie screeches. The golems seemed to be strong war machines created by their empire, but there were terrible things flowing out of it. W. What is that? It was disgusting. Furthermore, the people who were attacking those golems seemed to be a priest and holy knights of the Church of the Sun God. Something is weird. I know, something's definitely weird. The soldiers started to be wary of what their leaders might say next. Kale heard Imperial Prince Aiden's voice just as he realized this. Metalona. Vice Tower Master Metalona raised her hand and started to shout. Attack that swordsman and the birds that destroyed the sword of the Empire and our golems, the holy relics of ancient times. The mages and alchemists started to attack in unison. Hundreds of magic spells flew into the sky again. Ha, ha ha, Kale started to laugh. You scummy bastards. Choi Han, Klopa, and the white skeleton birds were now close to the Golem Brigade. But the Empire was launching their attacks toward them right now. What they were doing was obvious. They're trying to cover it up. They were trying to cover up the black smoke and the terrible screeching. It was probably a method to calm the chaos in the minds of the soldiers and nobles. Bong. Bong. Rosalind and the Whipper Kingdom's side cast spells as well. She had no choice. They had to protect the white skeleton birds. Bong. Bang. Bang. The black smoke and terrible screeching were being drowned out by the sound of the spells exploding. Human. Choi Han and I destroyed the golem and saw the black liquid flowing out of the orb. We need to destroy these things, but I don't know how to do it. We need to call Goldie Gramps. Kale could hear Rayan's voice through the loud explosions. He raised his head up at the same time. He could see a white skeleton bird flying up to dodge the spells. There was a helmeted swordsman on top of that bird. 
and something was weird about Choi Han. He seemed to be bewitched by that black liquid. Choi Han became weird. But what do we do with those 30 or so golem cores? This is bad. Who will destroy them all? We need to save everyone but I, I am great and mighty but have not learned everything yet. Kale repeatedly opened and closed his fists. Do I need to step in? I don't have a choice. I can't let that linger behind. I need to get rid of it. However, his act of pretending to be on the Empire's side would become useless if he did that. He needed to have Sir Rex as well. Stepping in would make that extremely difficult. Furthermore, his stepping in would mean the Rhone Kingdom would be involved in this battle as well. But the Rhone Kingdom did not want to see their citizens shed any more blood. It was at that moment. He could hear the fire of destruction's voice at that moment. There were others who could purify the black despair as well. Were? Does that mean I don't need to step in? Dark elves and necromancers. Ha! Huh. Kale was flabbergasted. The dark elves who had to live in hiding because humans loathed them. And the necromancers who were destroyed by the Church of the Sun God and the other light affinity churches. They are still a part of nature. Nature has never thrown away the dark elves and the necromancers. Kale recalled someone's voice at that moment. It was someone from the Black Desert, that land of death. That person had lived in that underground city their whole life. It felt as if all of the veins in my body were going to explode. I needed to learn to control dead mana in order to survive through that pain. That was why I chose to be a necromancer instead of a black mage. The ten-year-old Mary had chosen to become a necromancer in order to survive. And she was now needed to save the people on this battlefield. Kale couldn't help but laugh as he continued to think. Human, are you okay? Did you go crazy because you are so angry? You can't become like Klopa. Black magic was being covered up as alchemy right in front of the Church of the Sun God's eyes? There was nothing more comical than this. Boom boom. The rumblings in his body became even stronger. Kale felt his body starting to heat up. The fire was starting to get bigger. Human. I will contact Goldie Gramps for now. Kale didn't stop Rayon. It was something that Arahaban needed to know. The Empire's base was currently loud. Kale started to speak as he stood with Crown Prince Valentino in a spot away from the others. Go bring Mary. Kale gave an order toward the video communication device in Vice Captain Hillsman's pocket. Young Master Kale. Kale ignored Rosalind's voice and continued to speak. Don't destroy the golems for now, just block them. Kale's gaze quickly moved through the Imperial Prince, the battlefield, and Maple Castle. I will contact Prince Alberu right away as soon as Rayon finishes contacting Arahaban. I'll make my move after that. Kale had made up his mind. It was at that moment. Human. Human. Rayon's urgent voice could be heard. Kale felt his heart drop. Did something happen to Arahaban Nim? He could hear Rayon's voice. I can't contact Goldie Gramps. Ah, damn it. Rayon hesitated and continued on as Kale started to frown. Human. T, there is a message that was just left on the video communication device. Message? From who? It's from the jungle. Latana sent the message. Latana, the queen of the jungle. What does she need? She was currently leading the jungle's warriors to the section of the jungle that was close to the empire's southern border. Kale and Latana had changed their plans from the jungle helping the Whipper Kingdom to the jungle aiming for the empire's southern region once the empire lost this second round to the Whipper Kingdom. Furthermore, that was when Crown Prince Valentino and the Karo Kingdom would make their move as well. Rayon quickly recited the contents of the message. Young Master Kale. The jungle is under attack. The Empire is attacking Section 7 of the jungle, is what she said. Kale felt his mind go blank. Section 7 of the jungle. Of the 14 sections that made up the jungle, Section 7 was at the center of the jungle with a large river flowing through it. That was also where the head of the jungle, the king's palace was located. It was pretty much their palace. The empire attacked that area? That was bad. There's probably not that many warriors in section 7 right now. Latana isn't there either. Damn it. Kale looked toward imperial prince Aiden. He was certain that this bastard made his move knowing they weren't there. He made the move knowing Latana and the warriors would not be in that section. She also said, Young Master Kale, I think there is a spy within our jungle. Kale clenched his fists. Spy. 
That made Kale recall when the jungle had started the fire in section 1 of the jungle. Yes, that had to be it. There was no way for the Empire to set that fire without a spy. But the spy can't be a leader since they don't know about the alliance between the four kingdoms and one tribe. I was too complacent. No, I was stupid. Young Master Nim? Vice Captain Hillsman cautiously called out to Kale whose face suddenly stiffened up, however, Kale did not hear him. The birth of a hero, had told him about the spy on Tunka's side. However, it did not say anything about a spy when it discussed the Pillar of Fire in Section 1 of the Jungle. That was why he had believed the Empire had done it on their own. But Kale suddenly had a question. How did the Empire directly attack Section 7, the center of the jungle without running into the jungle's warriors? Ah. Kale realized the answer as soon as he asked that question and Rayon answered it as well. Latana had left the answer. They say that a flying object has appeared, it had the Mogoru Empire's flag on it, is what she said. The Empire had a way to dominate the air as well. As expected, Aiden was not an easy enemy to defeat. They would openly attack the Whipper Kingdom while also dealing with the jungle that was aiming for their back. Bong. Bong. The spells continued to crash against each other while the white skeleton birds and the golems continued to smash at each other. The Whipper Kingdom did not attack the golems and just focused on defending. It was because of Kale's order. Kale knew that as well. It was at that moment. Rayon told Kale about the last message Latana left. Young Master Kale, I'm sorry but I am retreating. I need to save Section 7. According to the reporting warrior, alchemists appeared on the deck of the flying object and are trying to summon something. I have a bad feeling about this. I will contact you as soon as I know what they are summoning. Is what she said. Human, that thing they are summoning. Rayon hesitated before adding on. What if it is something like that golem? There were probably only a few warriors left for defense and section 7 of the jungle was filled with regular people. What would happen if golems or that black despair covered up that land? The fire of destruction gave Kale the answer. The black despair is the same as poison to the living as it originated from dead mana. In fact, it is an even stronger poison than dead mana. They have cursed abilities. Hell would break loose there. Kale opened his mouth to speak at that moment. Fuck it all. Vice Captain Hillsman and Crown Prince Valentino who were looking at him looked completely shocked. However, Kale just continued to speak. Call them over. Kale's hand wrote a name in the air. Push. He then pushed Hillsman who was supporting him away. Young Master Nim? Huh. Young Master Nim? Why are you leaving? Hillsman tried to catch Kale in shock but Kale ignored him and nonchalantly started to walk. He was walking toward Imperial Prince Aiden. He slowly headed to the center of the battlefield where Aiden was standing. The battlefield was chaotic. Oh, Commander. Why aren't you resting? Commander Nim, please get some rest. The nobles and the Empire's forces all commented with concern as he headed toward the center of the battlefield. However, Kale's gaze was only focused on one spot. It was focused on Imperial Prince Aiden who was calmly standing at the center. The relaxed Aiden turned his head and made eye contact with Kale. Commander. What is it? Is your body oh? It was the moment he started to speak. Wind rose up at the tip of Kale's feet. It only took a split second. His body shot forward like an arrow. Kale reached his hand out. He then grabbed Aiden. Okay ah. Uh. The Imperial Prince gasped for breath. Pale hands were choking his neck. Aiden realized something at that moment. He's not in pain. There was a lot of strength in Kale's pale hands contrary to how they looked. The Imperial Prince's head was tilted back and he could see the reddish-brown eyes looking down at him. Kale, the owner of those eyes, smiled extremely brightly as he started to speak. Your back is so open. All of this only took a few seconds. Eek. Commander. Your Highness. What the hell? The Empire's side turned into a mess. However, Imperial Prince Aiden looked toward Kale and started to smile. I, I knew, ah, uh, that I should be suspicious of you. There was a reason he had not let go of that 1% chance. There was also a reason he was smiling. Can you act so brazenly? Could the Rhone Kingdom, could Kale Henatus act like this? Aiden could see that Kale Henatus was smiling even brighter than he was smiling. Kale whispered in Aiden's ear. Hey, Aiden. Ah. Uh. Kale's joyful voice reached Aiden's ear as he let out a groan. 
I will definitely kill you myself. Aiden flinched. Kale's eyes really seemed to be full of anger and desire to kill him. Kale heard Rayan's voice in his mind at that moment. My magic is not working. My goodness, this is magic? It's at Goldie Gramps level. It's the same as me, human, shield. Kale immediately activated the indestructible shield. Black wind arrows suddenly shot toward Kale from the right side. Ah! Kale's body jerked back from the shock and couldn't hold onto the Imperial Prince anymore. He was okay thanks to the shield and Rayan's shield around it, but the shock shook Kale up. However, Kale continued to smile as he looked toward the person standing in front of the Imperial Prince. Hante, the Tower Master's disciple. Kale spoke toward Hante's eyes that were full of vitality unlike his body. You're the Tower Master, aren't you? Hante started to smile. You bastard. You're saying some funny shit. I was wondering what was going on, that you even have a dragon with you. Wow, he's not even denying it. He even realized the dragon by my side? The final red star must be a black mage. Kale looked around. He could see people who were in shock and could not decide whether to attack him or not. Metalona, the alchemist's bell tower's vice tower master shouted at that moment. She figured this was a good opportunity. It was a chance to capture Kale and justify attacking the Rhone Kingdom. Catch the bastard who attacked His Highness. Someone dared to touch the Imperial Prince. This person dared to kill the Imperial Prince. He deserved to be executed for his actions. Metalona could not figure out why Kale suddenly attacked the Imperial Prince. She believed it was his error or improper decision making. Catch him right away. We cannot forgive him. Her continued orders made the soldiers, knights, and mages surround Kale to attack. Hey. Kale let out a quiet laugh. It's a ruined. He had ruined the plan to move in the darkness while pretending to be on the Imperial Prince's side with his own hands. He needed to remain in hiding to do that. No way I can hide anymore. How could Mary get rid of these golems and the ones in the jungle alone? Kale had to step in as well and it was only a matter of time for the Rhone Kingdom and Kale to be revealed if Mary stepped in anyways. What do I have to lose to do it out in the open when these bastards are doing the same thing? And beyond all of that, after seeing this situation, knowing the origin of the golems and all of the Empire's dirty tactics. I'm so angry, his instincts as a trash popped out. Let's flip everything over. It was the moment something sparkled in the mumbling Kale's eyes. Boom. Boom. The rumblings inside his body stopped. Metalona shouted at the same time. What are you all doing? Capture that bastard who is standing there like an idiot. However, her voice was drowned out. Kale had shouted in a louder voice. The regular citizens of the Empire and any believers of the Church of the Sun God step back. What? The people approaching him, especially the Sun God believers, flinched at the unexpected statement. Believers of the Church of the Sun God, that was approximately two-thirds of the Empire's citizens. They could see Commander Kale Henatu shouting so loud that his neck veins were showing. He was someone who had said something similar to the tenets of the Church of the Sun God while he received the Medal of Honor from the Empire. He continued to shout. Did you see the black smoke and the black arrows? They are people who use dead mana. Dead mana. The Light Affinity priests and believers flinched this time. The Vice Tower Master, Imperial Prince, and Hante all looked toward Kale. Kale continued to shout with eyes full of vitality. I got a clear look at His Highness's eyes just now. Rayon spoke in his mind. Human, they will be here soon. Kale continued to speak. He has been captured by black magic. Black magic. That term made Vice Tower Master Metalona flinch. How did he know about the black magic? She believed that nobody would know about black magic that was said to have disappeared in ancient times. Even a dragon would not be able to realize it right away. That was because a dragon's life lasted only 1,000 years while the ancient times were over 10,000 years ago. Stop with the nonsense. Immediately catch this heretic. He is a person from the Rhone Kingdom, not the Empire. Metalona shouted and a few knights pointed their swords toward Kale. It was at that moment. Human, they're here, pot. A bright light surrounded the battlefield. A teleportation magic circle appeared next to Kale at the same time. Huh. Ah. The knights stopped moving. The name that Kale had written in the air earlier. Jack. Call Saint Jack over. 
he was someone any of the Empire's Church of the Sun God believers would recognize. The man with the innocent and gentle expression appeared. The saint and the holy maiden. The people who had ran away after being called terrorist and murderer. However, the Empire's forces could not open their mouths while looking at Jack. Shaw a strand of light was coming out of Saint Jack. It was divine power with healing qualities. The light injuries on the knights and soldiers slowly healed as the light surrounded them. The soldiers' pupils shook as they watched what happened. Jack had the pure and warm touch of the sun that there was no way he could be a terrorist. Clang. Tang. The knights who were believers stopped their attacks while the soldiers who were believers dropped their weapons. Kale continued to speak. We will move forward. It was close to what the Church of the Sun God had shouted when they got rid of the necromancers. We will head toward the light. Something similar but not exactly the same as what they had said came out of Kale's mouth. It was obvious. The Roan Kingdom, Whipper Kingdom, the jungle as well as the necromancer and dark elves would head together from here on. It was just a new history to be written by multiple kingdoms, many churches, many tribes and all humans. They would focus on a new enemy different than how the necromancers and dark elves were suppressed in the past. Their enemy was the imperial prince and black magic. I just need to create a new plan if I need to reveal myself. He just had to fight with a new plan. Kale attacked the imperial prince's neck. Then the saint appeared. Those shocking images will be etched on everyone's minds. Kale looked toward Saint Jack. Jack could not figure out everything that was going on because he was suddenly called over. However, he subconsciously knew what to say after seeing Hante and the black smoke in the sky. We will overcome it together. It was the new will of the world that he had learned while being with Kale until now. Right after that. P.E.P. -E they heard the sound of a flute. The Empire's forces lifted their heads up. The largest white skeleton bird was flying above them. The white-haired priest and the helmeted swordsman reached their hands out toward Kale and Jack. The birds of the people who looked like holy knights surrounded them. It was as if they had come to rescue the saint. They all saw something at that moment. L. Light. That is. A different light than the one that had been healing the Empire's Foss's injuries appeared. It was so bright that it made Saint Jack look dull. It was gold in color like the sun but a blood-red color that instilled fear was mixed in with it. Rayon was honestly shocked as he shouted out. H. Human. You look so freaking strong right now. The rose gold light started to surround Kale's body. It was a mix of the blood red color of destruction and the bright light of purification. Kale could hear the voice of the fire of destruction. Destroy the despair. Please. The flame that was known to have burned brightly before disappearing reappeared in the world. Kale climbed onto the white skeleton bird and shouted out. He made eye contact with the imperial prince and Hante. Destroy the golems that were made with black magic. He'll destroy them all. His instincts as a trash kicked in for the first time in a long time. Chapter 300. Following your instincts. 1. They're flying back up. The Karo Kingdom's crown prince Valentino. He watched as the white skeleton birds that were floating above the Empire's forces fly back up into the sky. He could also see light shining down on the faces of the Empire's forces again as the birds had been covering up the sun. Your Highness, I will be on my way as well. What? Hillsman. Crown Prince Valentino watched Vice Captain Hillsman floating up into the sky. Vice Captain. The human said to make sure I don't leave you behind. Hillsman listened to Rayan's voice and thought about his lord that was looking for him. It was time for him to get involved in the war as well. This Crown Prince Valentino and his knights blankly watched Hillsman fly away. The vice captain no longer had the silly expression on his face as it was replaced with a serious expression fitting a highest grade expert. Please take care of the rest. Crown Prince Valentino returned to his senses as Hillsman quietly whispered to him and quickly started to shout. Capture that person. He is a subordinate of the bastard who tried to kill Aiden. He then looked around. He made eye contact with Imperial Prince Aiden. Valentino walked toward him with a concerned expression on his face. He needed to remain as Aiden's close friend for now. It was not yet time for Valentino to stab Aiden in the back. Clang. Clang. Follow His Highness's orders. He could hear his subordinates playing along as he urgently rushed toward Aiden. He looked around as he did that. People looked shocked at this unexpected development. However, that shock was slowly disappearing from their faces. 
Valentino paid close attention to the soldiers, knights, and nobles. He could see the changes in their expressions. Fear and disbelief replaced shock. Black Magic and Saint Jack. The people of the Empire slowly started to suspect and question things after seeing both of them. Amazing. Valentino could not hide his shock toward Kale's side. At the same time, he could not help but loathe the Empire even more. They've done too many dirty things. He started to speak to Aiden who was touching his neck. Are you okay? Aiden slightly nodded his head and started to shout toward the other side. Do not let the enemy's words shake you. The Empire's forces looked toward him, even though his words could not stop their shaking hearts. Why is alchemy black magic? It is the pillar that has supported the Empire for hundreds of years. Don't forget that it was the only place to reach out to help the children of the slums. The chaos died down a bit. The children of the slums and Hante who was the evidence of the program's success. Hante was alive and well as he shouted from next to the imperial prince. I just used regular magic. The mages here would have felt an evil aura if it was black magic. The people could see the mages nodding their heads. The captain of the mage brigade spoke up. It was not black magic. It was a black arrow, but it did not have that unique evil aura of black magic. He also did not detect any dead mana. The testimony of the mage brigade captain who had been nearby calmed the chaos down. I came here to repay the empire for the grace it has shown me. Hante continued to shout. The imperial prince had a rare look of urgency as he started to shout. His shout woke everyone up from their shock. We are currently on the battlefield. We must get rid of them in order to survive. In order to survive. That phrase jerked people out of their shock. Knights, raise your swords. Soldiers, pick up your weapons. Aiden actively moved around to rally the troops. The Empire's forces returned to their original alert selves thanks to his efforts. However, the questions and suspicions had not disappeared. Aiden continued to shout. Golems and mages obliterate those evil enemies. Enemies. He was talking about Kale's group up in the sky. At the center of Kale's group, Kale was standing on top of the largest white skeleton bird. Crackle. Crackle. Fire and light were clashing around his body. It prevented Kale's group from approaching him as well. Choi Han got goosebumps on his arms. He could feel a strong power coming from Kale. He subconsciously asked a question. Kale Nim, are you okay? Kale looked toward the pale Choi Han. He was almost bewitched. Rayon had told Kale that Choi Han was almost bewitched by the black despair. Kale tried to nod his head to say he was fine. Someone interjected at that moment. Kale Nim. That must be a new power. Kale Nim, I really can't figure out your limits. Look at this beautiful flame. It is more beautiful and marvelous than the sun. Ah, Klopa. Kale ignored the voice of the crazy bastard. He could see that Saint Jack looked shocked after hearing what Klopa just said, however, he ignored that as well and started to speak. Golems will probably appear in the jungle as well. The smile on Klopa's face quickly disappeared. Jungle and golems. A terrible sight filled his mind already. That is why Miss Latana is currently retreating to their capital, Section 7. Choi Han responded first after Kale was finished. He recalled the black liquid and urgently added on. Kale Nim. A large number of people will die if that black liquid or golems sweep away the jungle. The jungle did not have many mages or alchemists. They had a majority of strong warriors who were strong in close combat rather than distance attacks, meaning they would probably get hit by that black liquid if any of the golems' cores blew up. Furthermore, there were a lot of citizens there as well. We need to stop that first. Choi Han flinched after shouting with a state of urgency. Of course, it is important to capture the Imperial Prince right now as well. It was important for his side to win. However, Choi Han was listening to the voices of the people within the Black Despair. That was why he said the following. We cannot allow that thing to attack people or reach the forest. We need to save the people first. He could see a cold gaze in Kale's eyes at that moment. He was giving off a vibe that was hard to approach as he stood there surrounded by fire and light. Was I too emotional? It was the moment Choi Han had that thought on his mind. Calm down. Kale calmly responded back. Do you think I don't know that? Ah, he's his usual self. Choi Han noticed that Kale was his usual self even though he was giving off a different vibe. That was why he was looking forward to what Kale would say next. 
Kale started to speak as soon as Hillsman landed on the white skeleton bird. I will now give out the orders. Kale's voice would be heard on the white skeleton birds as well as on Maple Castle through the video communication device. Kale started to smile as he knew that would be the case. Human. What are you going to do? What do I have to do? What am I going to do? There was just one thing Kale was planning on doing. A shit show. Excuse me? Kale Nim. Young Master Kale, what do you mean? Human. You're going to create a shit show. I want to do it too. Everyone responded differently. However, the majority of them were confused. On the other hand, Kale was putting things in simple terms. He would properly destroy everything. Kale was someone who accomplished the things he planned on doing. That was why he changed roles with his group for the first time. Kale had always been at the back, he always left other people to launch the attack. However, it was different this time. Kale continued to speak. Support me. He would be at the center of this operation. They should have all understood as they were all intelligent people. Young Master Kale. Rosalind called out to him with concern while Choi Han's mouth opened and closed multiple times as he didn't know what to say. Kale patted the pale Choi Han's shoulder and calmly continued to speak. This is something I have to do. Choi Han was almost bewitched by the black despair. That meant that he needed to keep Choi Han out of the battle. It would be great if Mary could help, however, she would only have a low impact. He needed something that would make a great impact. Fire that burns evil. All of the Empire's citizens as well as the Whipper Kingdom's citizens needed to see it. This could end up becoming a continental war in the end after all. Kale Nim, the group looked toward him. Kale started to speak as Saint Jack looked at him with his hands together to pray. Everybody dodge. Excuse me. Kale calmly added on when Vice Captain Hillsman blankly asked back. I don't think I can control myself today. Excuse me? Kale kicked off the ground while everybody stood there in confusion. Rayon. Sigh, all right, human. The human surrounded in rose gold light started to freely fly in the sky. It was thanks to Rayon's magic. Kale could see the white skeleton birds flying as he did that. They were not flying toward the golems, smart bastard. Kale started to smile while thinking about Klopa. He slowly headed down. Tens of spells were flying over his head. As I expected. Rosalind was smart as well. The spells that she had the Whipper Kingdom's mages launch were moving in the same direction as the white skeleton birds. Bong. Bong. Bang. The hundreds of spells from the Empire headed toward the white skeleton birds and the Whipper Kingdom's spells. It was only possible thanks to that. Kale could peacefully get face to face with the golems. He looked toward Maple Castle. He could see an angry Rosalind as well as Mary, Tunka, and Harold next to her. They were supporting him as he had ordered. They were making it so that Kale could take on the golems alone. Kale commented as if he was sighing. I told you to support me. Guarding you is my way of supporting you, Kale Nim. He's right. I will support you like that too. Weak human, I can't help it because I am worried. Choi Han and Rayon were in the air with Kale. Kale sighed and looked down. He, he he, he then started to laugh. Those large golems were looking up at him. No, they were aiming for him. He could see the pilots as well. They were the ones who made these golems. Kale slowly opened his arms. Can you hear it? The fire of destruction asked. I can. Kale could hear it as the golems got closer. It sounded like the cries of a large number of people. They were stuck inside the large golems' bodies and unable to leave. There were the cries of Sir Rex's siblings, the children from the slums, and even the Roan Kingdom's citizens who were sold as slaves. They were all here. The fire of destruction continued on. I had to hear my parents cry like this in the past. My parents were captured inside the golems as well. My parents had given their everything for me. The fire of destruction had received so many things from his parents. He had to pay back as much as he had received. That was the reason he had gone crazy, as well as the reason he needed to save the Western continent. He needed to become someone his parents could be proud of. I am someone who needs to burn up and disappear. The fire continued to speak, but I will not burn alone. Boom. 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 Kale slowly felt his heart beating faster as he closed his eyes. The last thing he saw were the concerned expressions on the faces of his friends before his eyes fully closed. He could only see darkness. 
The voice of the fire appeared in his mind again. The things that need to burn with me are in front of me. Use me. Kale decided to run wild for today. He didn't know the limits of the fire of destruction just yet. But why would a trash need to think about something like that? I just do whatever I feel like doing. Sometimes, doing what your heart told you to do was the right answer. Ruumble. The sky started to cry. Choi Han looked up at the clear sky and clenched his sword on instinct. He could hear Rayan's voice. It's coming. Choi Han, the fire is coming. The real fire is coming. Rayan's voice was shaking. Rayon subconsciously shouted in everyone's minds. Dodge. We need shields. Kale's group heard the cry of the sky as they flinched at Rayan's warning. Ruumble ruumble it was extremely loud. The entire sky seemed to be rumbling. Follow me. Klopa quickly led the white skeleton birds away while Rosalind started to shout. Shield. Create as many shields as possible. A silver shield was created in front of Maple Castle at that moment. It was Rayan's shield. Kale slowly opened his eyes at that moment. He could hear the fire of destruction's voice. Give it all you got. Kale started to speak. Destroy it. Destroy it. It was at that moment. The sky became dyed red. It was as if the sky had become dyed in blood. However, it was not that the sky had changed color. W. What is that? The Empire's forces had plopped down on the ground. It was the moment a beautiful gold light touched on the red thing in the sky. A fearsome and holy light appeared in the sky as if a god was punishing them. The sky split open. No, that rose gold light struck down to the ground. The light that was faster than sound flashed in front of everyone's eyes. The sound soon followed. Bong, bong, bong. Tens of fiery thunderbolts landed on the ground. It covered the battlefield where the golems were standing. Ah, Rosalind subconsciously stepped back and grabbed onto a pillar on the tower. She could not breathe. She could feel the pressure through the dragon's silver shield. T. That is the true power of young Master Kale's fire? Fire was the only thing she could see. A fire with a gold tint to it. That fire burned strong as it shot up toward the sky. Bong. Bong. He then saw it. The large black golems were starting to break. They were being destroyed. They were disappearing without leaving any traces. Ah. Ah. The pilots in the golem's cockpits tried to activate the emergency eject plan. However, everything was already melting. How did the golems melt by fire? These strong existences that were even strong against Aura were being melted by a fire. The golem pilots were trying their best to escape. It was at that moment, they started to hear something else. Screech 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 screech. Then the black smoke shot up. The fire melted the golems and their cores. Neither the Empire's forces nor the Whipper Kingdom's forces could see the enemy formation anymore. All they could see was fire. They could not even tell where the sky ended and the ground began as they could only see fire. The golems were burning inside that fire. H, how terrible. Plop. One of the Empire's nobles landed on their butt. Screech screech. Screech, screech. A cry that was worlds apart from earlier started to appear again as the golems melted. The black smoke caught people's attention at that moment. People, people. The soldiers started to shake in fear. The black smoke took the shape of a skull. The alchemists in the cockpits could see this as well. It felt as if the eyes of those black smoke skulls were looking at them. They heard the cries of the people who died by their hands while they saw these black smoke skulls staring at them. The pilots could not help but plop down on the ground. The fire spread to their bodies but they could not move. They could see a devil looking at them from behind the skull's eyes. No, they could see the destroyer. It was a man with hair as red as blood. Kale Henatus. He was looking down from the sky with a cold gaze in his eyes. One of the pilots started to mumble. Aye, it's over, the Empire and the Whipper Kingdom. Neither could see the enemy anymore. All they could see was a suffocating sea of fire. There was also the rising black skulls and the terrible screech. But most importantly, there was Kale Henatus, the person at the center of it all. 